Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special May the 4th, our first throwback Wednesday, I think. Uh, we are revisiting one of my all-time favorite games, Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures Game. It's May the 4th. Formerly, How thematic. Formerly made by Fantasy Flight Games, now under the... Uh, uh, stewardship of Atomic Mass. Yeah. The miniatures department over at Asmodee. Wonderful intro. Um, I really, last night I was, <laughs> I was sitting there looking in the mirror and I was like, all right, how am, how, the teleprompter. How am I going to do this? How am I going to set this up? Oh my Just gosh. Just kidding. Let me tell you something. X-Wing is an exceedingly notable game for us. At for a lot of reasons. I guarantee you 50% or higher of the YouTube scri- subscribers we have got here because of X-Wing. Mm. Because of Paul Heaver's monumental finals game. I think that was the 2013, 2013 World Championship Finals. Oh. Was it Paul versus Dallas? It was so good. The classic. That was the uh, moment that I speculated Paul actually flew his X-Wing onto the roof of the FFG Game Center to attend the event. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I don't know if it was that World Championship that he won or the next one. But he, it was like a, the finals were on a Sunday and he had to like dart to his plane. Yeah. And it... The joke he at like the time was he like he had ran. to run upstairs to his <laughs> X-Wing his and get on. out of here, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a storied game with a, a, a crazy history with us. I mean, the, I was I didn't really think about it. We have been wanting to stream X-Wing for a while, and then it kind of made the fourth. It's like, yeah, this seems like a good chance. But it, it was almost 10 years ago. So this August will be 10 years since that Gen Con when X-Wing hit the scene. Yeah. And that was a super notable Gen Con, I think, for Fantasy Flight Games. X-Wing and Netrunner both coming out. And for us as well, that was a, a decade ago, we had opened the store here in Tulsa, and we've been open at this point a couple months, uh, but we had no idea what was around the corner, which was Star Wars X-Wing, Android Netrunner. So, and all the good things that would come. All the good things. Uh, I've got to fix this sink, apparently. Yeah, you're good. Um, but X-Wing uh, debuted Gen Con 2012, and was met with insane levels of success. That was the longest at the timeline I'd ever seen for anything. Uh, both those games coming out, players just holding stacks of boxes of uh, ships or uh, core sets for Netrunner. And it's the huge, huge line uh, at Gen Con. And things would never be the same after that point. That was a, a huge moment for us, I think, as a store as well. There's a lot of new players coming in for both those games. I swim was massive. getting built, a lot of our locals introduced to us the same way. A lot of people online, like you were saying, and then come back to normal. I'm going to sit here awkwardly. Ooh, now it's weird. Everybody freaking out. It's crazy. Let's see if this works. And Sometimes saying, this works. Who's ready for some tiny, adorable space dogfighting? All right, let's see if this works. All right, let me know Let me know out there in, uh, in video land. Um... Uh, if we are synced up, it's probably going to take a little, uh, probably 30 seconds to to catch figure up it out whether or not I had to catch up the frames and the frame rates and the kilohertz and the uh, gigs of biggery and all of that. Um, and then I'll let you uh, proceed. Uh, go ahead. Question, I think we should be good. Question of the day. How did you first learn of or first interact with us, uh, Covenant? And uh, along with that answer, I- I'm just curious how many people are going to say Star Wars X-Wing. I have to imagine it's going to be at least half. It, it's well, probably, 100% here. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> you know, but if some aspiring content uh, strategist wanted to post the question of the day as a clip and, and have other people who would see this that maybe aren't watching the X-Wing video fully, be an interesting moment to clip, you know, the question of the day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <laughs> but really, though, this is one of my favorite games. We had played, we, we don't have an extensive uh, history of playing miniatures games. So the first miniatures game we really played, as far as I know, at least me, was Mage Knight. And we, we have thrown back to that game. Pre-painted miniatures Oof. game from, like, the late 90s, 2000s that was... It, you just need to see that stream. Uh, very special in its own right. But then after that, uh, years later, Covenant started, and we started with the card games. That was the first game that we were supporting and creating content for and selling. And then the game after that was actually Monster Apocalypse. It was, yeah. Which yeah. was another of these pre-assembled, pre-painted miniatures games. Um, and that was like our life for a couple years. That was uh, the only thing we were doing. And then that went away. We had opened the store and we're kind of going back into card games with Lord of the Rings, the LCG and Game of Thrones, the LCG. And the Netrunner was also hitting. But X-Wing was another pre-assembled, pre-painted miniatures game. This time set in the Star Wars universe. 
And right about that time is when Lucasfilm was buying or getting mm-hmm. bought by Disney. Wild a, time. A lot of optimism at the time, yeah. uh, which I'm sure we'll cover uh, throughout this stream. But then this game came out, and not only was it a pre-painted, pre-assembled miniatures game featuring Star Wars ships that looked great, uh, which you'll see in some of in a minute, but there it had been a while since there had been a Star Wars game at all. And the... it's. But um, it was one of the most elegantly designed miniatures games uh, I'd ever experienced. At the time, we were also dabbling like War Machine hordes and like true miniatures and games. And like constructing uh, models yeah. and painting. So it's super easy to get to the table. The rule structure, even though Steve and I have not, I have not played in years, I got really serious about this game uh, in the like 2015 to 2018 time zone. Um, before taking a break after 2.0 came out and then the pandemic hit. Uh, but they recently released a kind of 2.5. They did a 2.0 update, I think 2018, 2019, and then the pandemic hit. And then they have now since done a 2.5 after moving to Atomic Mass and adopting actually a lot of Atomic Mass uh, slash miniature game things yeah. that, that weren't in the original X-Wing. Uh, I, I, I know very little about how the communities respond to this other than it's somewhat uh, split. Some people love the changes, some people don't. Zach, I can't imagine that being the case. With changes of any kind, half the people like it, half the people don't, or a split in the community. We've never seen that before, Yeah, honestly. Which, yeah. especially with second edition. So we did the podcast series, Usually How to Run a Game. All, everyone's cool with it. How to Run a Game, right? Yeah. Podcast series. Uh, and on that series... It's totally yeah. derailing <laughs> Zach Just constantly. Un- during this but we did that series, and <laughs> the reason that that is divisive, which I am actually responding to what you're saying, is if you've been playing X-Wing for a decade with 1.0 and or 2.0 rules, yeah. then it's, pro- it's probably unlikely that 100% of those people are like, you know what I want after a decade of playing the same game? I want this to be different. Yeah, I want it to be different. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it's the Even recognition. There are problems with the original system. Sure. I you totally. It always happens. And I, the recognition being, I think, the same reason for 2.0 um, is if we keep doing what we're doing, eventually this game is not going to exist because people are either tired of it, complaining about it. it it's h- too hard for new players to get into, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Classic. Um, and, you know, it's, t- it's tough doing 2.0s and 2.5s and that kind of uh, business because your core fan base that's been around forever, people don't like change. Yeah. You learn that more as you get older, don't you? Yeah. Well, it's because you like change less as you get older. We had those killer videos with Alex, though. Those videos were awesome. I want to check him in the chat here. Speaking of Alex, we're going to be interviewing him for our Power 7 podcast series, which we are also testing, posting on YouTube. But you can find that on all our various podcast channels. Yeah, it's coming uh, up. It's going to be spicy. Yeah, Alex, one of the original developers for X-Wing. Uh, a lot of interviews with him over the years. I'm excited to talk to him in general. Uh, see what's up. As far as where people started here, Ashes for uh, Xerador there. Uh, Game of Thrones for Matthew. X-Wing for Matthew uh, Beauregard. Netrunner tokens and subscription for Boyd. Star Wars CCG for Donovan Miller. Wow. That's uh, new. Jay Sibley Netrunner after we'd already stopped covering it. So the long term yeah. value. Chris on Ashes. Nachos on X Wing. Michael on Netrunner. Alex Becker on Netrunner. Thomas Morton on Netrunner. Brahmi on Marvel Champions. Surecast for Flesh and Blood. Jonathan for X Wing. So it's hardly cut and dry like I thought it would be. And then Torres 88 with the wild card. Power Rangers, the board game. Heroes of the Grid. That's why you just have to throw everything out there and hope that uh, somebody comes along and enjoys what you're doing. That's the idea. Uh, apparently the th- sync is fixed, so I'm less stressed now. Van is here saying, may the fourth be with you, so the stream can, of course, indeed uh, start. And uh, apparently Ryan Ganey saying, it's not that different. Matthew Beauregard saying, I've been playing since the game's release in 2012, and I love the changes. Bring it on. Variety is awesome and keeps the game fresh. Spooky spooking, Taylor Swift was the introduction. There. Oh my goodness, say it ain't so. We're going to have to do another Taylor Swift podcast. I'm telling podcast. you, it's content genius. It was secretly the best, worst thing we ever did. All right, let's talk about X-Men. So we have the history of X-Men. We recorded a bunch of incredible games. We did gameplay videos. We did commentary. It was our life for a while. I never really even played. I just <laughs> I just talked about it, and I talked to you about it. And I made You did sure a lot of commentary for it. You, I was like, you were the Pat Summerall and the John Madden. I, I don't know what I was. I was like just the guy on the side who was asking you what was going on from uh, somebody who I had absolutely no idea all of the time. Now I'm sitting here uh, about to play the game of X-Wing in a form that I'm le- less familiar with than even the original, and I see so much text 
that I'm scared. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about some of the changes. Yeah. So if you're totally new and you've never heard of X-Wing, we'll get into the gameplay in a second. If you've played X-Wing before and you haven't ever or haven't interacted with these new updates, this will be really helpful uh, to cover. So one of the key changes that happened is uh, the way points and squads work, right? So 2.0, one of the big updates, they removed point costs from ships so they could retroactively change point costs to balance upgrades and ships as the game went on, right? This is 2.0 you're talking 2. about? 2.0. Yeah, okay. So they gave themselves a lever to change the point values of everything. They had an app, and it was the kind of thing where, you know, when the first wave came out, you might have the original Darth Vader was, like, two, really good. Yeah. Then by, like, wave five, he's actually not so good anymore, and if he would still be playable if he could just cost 10 less points. Sure. So they started doing negative point upgrades and, like, upgrades that were specifically only for this character. Yeah. And all kinds of fun, funny stuff in 1.0 to make things playable. 2.0, they were like, you know what? Don't even put the points on the card. We'll tell you what the points are as we go. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't uh, Warhammer 40K try to do this? Age of Sigmar? I think Sigmar was I remember a weird, there was like, like a ah, and there's no points anymore and then they're like play whatever you want there was some I think it was more like there are no points and you can the, the rules are made up and the points don't matter yeah like, he, you can decide how many points in anyway. this is and you, you agree with your opponent how much these should be costed and you guys figure it out okay yeah and that's it okay so I Which, can imagine that that didn't go over terribly well in, in like did it did, did it did it work or did anyone play that or did they change it you don't remember it, I just remember there was a lot of hubbub about it. Yeah. And then I think something changed because everything started going right for GW. Yeah. Like, yeah. everything. They, they turned that ship right around. Friends Nightwatch Games in the chat. Good to see you guys. Hey. Or one of you or both of you. Um, Aaron Clark, how long does a typical game of X-Wing take? 45 to 60 minutes is the answer from Nightwatch, which they would know. Yeah, if you... Probably uh, host some events. Now, on stream, when we don't know what we're doing and you're new to the game... Could be a three-hour situation. Yeah, we do not know what we're in for uh, here. But, okay, so for 2.0, they made the change and removed the point cost. Yeah. 2.5, which I'll refer to everything happening here, um, they actually are doing squad building differently. So now every player has 20 points to spend. So each, each ship that you have costs you a certain number of points. As an example, I have Anakin Skywalker, one of my ships. Top left uh, is his pilot skill, uh, which is also a six, so that could be confusing. <laughs> but on the card that I have here, he's got this six right here in the middle. That's how many squad points he costs. Uh-huh. So the uh, you get 20 points to, to pick ships that you're putting into your list, and then each ship actually comes with what are called upgrade points. So the or the the... Little cards that you would include, you know, uh-huh. in X-Wing. You remember the little guys? Yeah. yeah, loadout points, I think, is what they're actually technically called. And so those points have nothing to do with your 20 points. It used to be when you were building a squad, even little, like, a, as an example, the R2-D2 upgrade would have a point cost. Yeah. That is a part of your total list. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What <laughs> could be better special. than this and okay. X-Wing? Mm. My friends, thank you so much. Steven, I'll let you give the spiel. Thank cheers you. Cheers to you. For anybody not aware, Cheers. Uh, we are working on the third iteration of our local retail store. We shut down 2.0 at the uh, beginning of COVID-19. We weren't sure what was going on. And uh, be frank, our lease was up and we didn't want to renew it. Uh, so we're in a temporary office currently, but we have acquired land and are working now on the architectural plans and the build out for the magnum opus, I would say, of every idea we've had about what a local game store should be. We're building it from scratch. We're taking a big risk. We don't know if it's going to work. We're excited about it. And uh, we hope everybody will come visit once it's all done. One of the components is a tight and well-executed menu of cocktails and espresso. And we are testing out those cocktails, usually on Wednesdays on the stream. We got to make them anyway. We got to figure out what we're doing. We got to train people. So why not uh, bring a little culture into the stream there and That's enjoy right. a nice drink while we're, we're flying little ships around. And one thing I want to say, we, we tap glasses, but uh, genuinely, uh, everyone out there who was a part of the X-Wing uh, community over the years in relation to us, we used to have people could blog on our website mm. all the mm-hmm. way to... we we'll theorists is out there. Seriously, Cheers Jeff. to you. Apparently uh, pops are beeping. Mm, when they come so up, cheer, they're beeping in. Yeah, cheers to Jeff. I, I, I oh, hope he's surprise. doing well. I haven't, I haven't um, seen theorists in a long time. We make we made a ton of tokens and templates, which we'll be using some of those today uh, for this game. Like, we still do tokens. Templates aren't really as, as much a part of what we're doing right now. But uh, everyone that bought those, all our subscribers, everyone that ordered product from us, all the tournaments, it's, it is 
hard to overstate how important the X-Men community was to where we are now. And uh, they were just a huge, tremendously huge part of us being able to continue doing what we're doing. So major props to all of you. Even though we don't sell this game anymore, anything relating to it, uh, I am immensely grateful to everyone. Uh, and all the people watching the videos and sharing the content and uh, all of it. It's crazy. You're all awesome. Um, I'm going to be right back. Oh. I think my name is Lana. Yeah, mo most of you, brother. Most of you. I think I think all of you. Um, so while Zach's uh, doing that, tell me tell me the following. So we're, we're talking about X-Wing 2.5. I know a lot of people probably uh, played 1.0 all the way into 2.5. So I think, Matthew, uh, you're out there talking about my love of the E-Wing, which I appreciate you remembering. Um, what's, the, what's the general take? Like, I haven't got the temperature of the X-Wing community since right before 2.0 release it right after and around 2.0. Um, I know there was the I don't want to buy the upgrade kits folks and there was people who were really excited and the release of all of that was kind of weird. Um, but now we've gotten, a, we've gotten a new stage with Atomic Mass and all of that. How, how are things going? Like what's the general at attitude, atmosphere, vibe uh, of 2.5 and X-Wing in general? Did it feel as big as it was? I remember I, I, it felt like it was a giant game yeah. early. I don't know if it, it doesn't feel like that to me anymore, but I also am so unattached. Like, I didn't yeah. even know 40K was a big deal until I got, like, deep into the hobby. And it's like, oh, there's millions of people playing this. The one thing I do know, and this is only a certain glimpse into it, but they had the big event at Adepticon recently. Yeah. And it was hundreds of players. Uh, of course, like, I, I think there's a certain amount of first big event since the pandemic. People going back out. And I do believe it was with the 2.5 changes. What the like local scenes everywhere look like and how many people are playing this week to week and all that kind of stuff, I have no idea. But I am yeah. curious to hear that from the chat. Ryan's saying about 70% positive now, I'd say, which is pretty good. <clears throat> um, uh, Paul Owen saying 2.0 didn't kick on from 1.0 in the way that was hoped. Uh, UK tournaments apparently were huge. So it seems well, like it's cracking on. One of the weirder things about 2.0 was they released those upgrade kits, which is the whole thing to convert your collection. But then I was talking to uh, Eric Riddle, who provided a lot of the stuff here, local X-Wing player. Thank, Thank you, you for Eric. That, Eric. Thanks. And uh, he was saying that, uh, and I, I kind of tuned it out, because <laughs> I had a pretty rough tournament experience three or four months into 2.0. Yeah. One, I had already been kind of a little burnt out from 1.0. 2.0 is out, excitement, fresh, and then get into a big tournament, it's like, this is kind of the same problems. Mm -hmm. They were able to fix it, apparently. Because the point cost changes, right? Like the issue, and then it, but it, anytime a list shows up like that, people they can they can mess with it. But he was saying, apparently it was like eighteen plus months where there was almost nothing released that if you bought the conversion kits you didn't have. Right, classic problem. Which yeah, obviously from a player excitement that's tough because you're not getting anything new. The point changes are happening, but there's nothing like new ships and cards yeah. and pilots and stuff. And then also from a retailer perspective, that's really tough because if the vast majority of your audience isn't buying anything for 18 months. Hard to keep hosting tournaments and being excited about it. Too, yeah, <clears throat> yeah that, that is challenging. So, Classic problem. More changes. Classic problems S everywhere. Squad building changes, that won't really affect us because this has already been built. But one of the downsides of that is that every ship now has max number of upgrade cards, which and, you can see. And the reason is because you buy a ship, and part of the ship's cost is the amount of upgrades it can have. Uh -huh. And so why wouldn't you use all of the upgrades if you can't? You fill every slot you can, and you do it. And, I mean, and that's why I have this little index card that has a ton of yeah. text on it for so, one of these tiny little so ships. Apparently, a really cool app that allows you to make these combined cards um, for your stat cards. Like my Anakin Skywalker has all his upgrades on him. Oh, that's that is nice. Um, but his in old X Wing, right? A lot of times you could have one or two ships that were decked out, but because those were costing you points you would inevitably have some amount of lower numbered upgrade card things. But they're also like Vader in 1.0 had like several zero cost things that let him do other things because like they were trying to fix him yeah, retroactively. Yeah, trying to fix him, yeah. But one thing I'll say, just the entirety of these changes that have happened make it feel more like miniatures games that I've seen. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you, it feels like a true blue miniatures game because chat's also talking about, you know, I have seven factions. So yes. It's the same old miniatures game thing, right? Yeah, which was a that was just 2.0, adding all the factions. But another big thing that changed is scenarios. What does so that mean? Previously, you won the game by blowing up your opponent's list. An old classic dogfight. Yeah. Uh, now you can still blow up your opponent's list, but you win when you score 20 points. 
So if you blow up Anakin Skywalker, you get six points, right? And these little things under here are really just showing you if you get past half of his health, you get half the points. So uh, you, it's How else do you get points then? See, well, the scenario. Is it like a, you know, a, uh, put the ball in the middle or, you know, whatever? There's the apparently round five the different maple. scenarios. So there's going to be one that we're playing, which I'll set up in a minute. <laughs> it's like capture the cargo and, and stuff? And there's one, it's really funny. There's one where it's like you go grab an objective thing and then you keep it until you take damage or something. Oh, it's like happen. capture the flag yeah, sort okay. of thing. Right on. So there's different, there's different objectives that aren't just blow up your opponent's uh, ships. Although if you do blow up their ships, you score points and also you remove their ships from the table. Okay. So it's harder for them to gain objectives, right? So it is still incentivizing you to blow ships up. But as an example now, a ship that can't be blown up, let's say a really defensive, really beefy ship, yeah. maybe you just decide not to ever blow it up. So it has a bunch of health, and they spent points on this big Falcon with these upgrades and stuff, and it's like, you know what? That's half your list. You can have that one big ship that can't die. Yeah. And you can grab one of the objectives and capture the flag and do your thing, but like, I'm going to go do the rest of the stuff. Okay. I mean, it can work. Mm -hmm. it, it can absolutely work. Now, now I will say, there is a... I actually like scenarios in miniature games mm -hmm. a lot, just as, as somebody who doesn't engage with it almost at all. So take this with a, a thousand shakers of salt. Uh, but there is a nice simplicity uh, to original X-Wings uh, sit down and try to try to be the best pilot yeah. and just blow the other ships up. Uh, the issue they were running into, I think, was all tournament-based. Of course. So as an example, I blow up one of your ships. Uh, it is when you're trying, when you're not willing to engage in good faith in a dogfight, <clears throat> right? It's yeah. like I kill a ship, and if it's hard for you to kill a ship if all I'm doing is running... Then, I run forever. Then you run forever and you win the... It's like 50 minutes of me just running. Yeah. And that would ha that ha I had several tournaments where it's like... <laughs> why, why do players have to be this? One bad roll, <laughs> right? Uh, why it, do we have to do this? It's like you roll all blanks with Evader and they get a critical hit and the critical hits the double damage and he dies. It's like, all right, you scored half my points there on that one ship. And then <laughs> the rest of the game is just you running. It's so hard for me to... That's even so even the Falcon, if you remember, the, the pain point of the Falcon was... You have the C-3PO R2 combo against I remember back. that so well. I yeah. did commentary on those mm -hmm. games. It was worse than the birds and yeah. ashes. So if there was a way where you were just like, I'm not even going to try to kill the Falcon. Yeah. Then that strategy actually isn't even yeah. viable. The Falcon so, evaded yeah. like forever. And I, I remember back in the day, I, I always uh, was uh, very much in favor of the idea of objectives. Because objectives that uh, aren't just about killing your opponent's ships and or objectives that change every round mean that it incentivizes you to play lists that are well-rounded for sure. achieving the objectives and not just at killing yeah. or not dying. It's a classic reality. One Infinity is the same way. Yeah. It was like, I need a, I need people that are good at optics and people that are good at logistics, and then I need some heavy hitters. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of other uh, changes. Probably the most notable in-game uh, ex change is the ini way initiative works. So I'm going to explain how the game functions very quickly. It's one of the best things about X-Wing. So we're gonna have these ships out. You wanna go top down real quick? I'll just yeah. show it. So watch out for your the back of your head. Yeah, I think, it's gonna... I think it's pretty far. So I have to lean pretty far to get in there. Uh, where do we wanna be? Uh, What's the best place for us here? Uh, for our faces? That's pretty good, actually. That's a pretty good spot, yeah. isn't it? So I have these four ships, right? And each ship has a dial. So uh, you know, I'll pick a thing and I'll show you how this works. Man, you you got you got the perfect, look at you, you little hands. You're just a hand guy oh, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Look, now you're just hands. <laughs> you can at least see that I'm a human being, but you're just hands. Uh, so you set the dials, right? This is how X-Wing uh, used to work, and I'm going to show you one of the big changes. <laughs> he likes the hands. <laughs> I just do this. <laughs> that was hand <laughs> It's so funny to me. Why is that so funny? <laughs> oh, here's Zach's hands. That's great. Um, so you set dials, and then uh, each pilot has what's called a pilot skill. So my Ahsoka Tano has a three pilot skill. She's my lowest pilot skill That's here. That's the big orange number? That's the big orange number on the base. Okay. Uh, it would be a big orange number on the stack card, but these are black and white, the Noir version. Um, and so what would happen is, starting with the lowest pilot skill, you would reveal the dial. So she's a three. And then whatever maneuver I picked, so it's this one bank. And it's the white arrow pointing to it. tells you that. Okay. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh, so I have this one bank template. And I would hold the base down. Remember, always hold the base. Pros Watch hold the base out for Pros the hold sloppy. The base. You remember, you remember all the jokes. Just put it anywhere, and you know, like all yeah, of the, where they bump. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget what it was. What was that? We used to say all sorts of things whenever there were issues with templates. You know, one th one thing I was thinking. Bumping ain't easy. Another uh, content idea that I thought would be fun to do at some point is an to ideas guy. 
to do live, like go back in the X Wing to 2013 finals, do live commentary on it now. Mm. But like, are you getting into that Bo Burnham react to our reaction kind of stuff? Well, it's less of a reaction. That's just a classic <laughs> game. That's like I, I've seen I've seen this on kind of ESPN where they'll play like a 90s Bulls game. Yeah, but they'll be not having the commentary from back then. It'll just be people talking about it now. Mm, so like kind how, of how classic it is. Yeah. Like, yeah okay. It's like, oh, I man, that. I can't believe uh, that kind of thing. I can see that. Um, anyways, so you put the one bank in. Uh, like this, you move. We did it, right? So front to back. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Okay, Keep did the that template. After you execute your maneuver, you can take actions. Right, you get one action typically. Uh, one of those is you have to look at your ship to see what you can even do. Uh, these are the actions down here in the bottom left. Like bottom left. So pull up a. Can you pull up a card to show Ahsoka yeah, Tana? Ahsoka you got Ahsoka up there. Yeah. So, so on the bottom the, of that card. Yeah. You know? It's actually yeah, on the right, right of that card. Right side of the card. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are the actions, and we'll explain how those work. But one of them is focus. So I take the focus action. I get this focus token. Slap it down there. I've done my maneuver. Right. Let me hold on. Let me. Let me. I'll even do you one better. Since I remember all of these things, it's it's pretty simple to explain. So like, focus is a good middle of the road. I am a little bit better on offense. A little bit better on defense. Yep. Target lock. I'm simply way better on offense. Effectively. Barrel roll. I get to do a little move. Uh -huh. A barrel roll. Yeah. Uh, and what's the other one? Boost. Evade. That gets me really good at defense. I get a free defense. So there's a, boost? A, there's a defensive maneuver, an offensive maneuver, a middle of the road maneuver, and a maneuver maneuver. What's a boost? And then a boost is also a maneuver maneuver. Yeah. There's Barrel a, rolls left or right, boost is boost forward. Boost is forward. Yeah. So you know, boost, um, you know. And that's basically all the actions, which we'll yeah. cover as we do this do this thing. But to cover the change that happened that's really relevant, we would proceed doing this from lowest pilot skill to highest pilot skill, right? So I have a three, five, five, six. So my fives would move, and my six would move. And then after everything's moved, uh, we go reverse order with who's going to shoot. Okay. So most ships have a firing arc that's at the front. And you can see on the base, it's got this, like this Anakin could shoot anyone in this mm -hmm. range. Right? And now we have the, the railroad as well, right? There's a in, right in front of you arc that matters. Uh, yeah, the, uh, what is that called? It's not a kill zone. It's like bullseye. a bullseye. Bullseye, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so... It used to be lowest pilot skill to highest pilot skill. You move, execute your action, and then you shoot in reverse order. And then you would determine at the start of the game who has initiative. Whoever has initiative, which I won't get into because it doesn't matter anymore. Um, <laughs> it's probably wise. means that if we both have a six, whoever's got initiative is the first person to move and the first person to shoot when it comes time. Mm -hmm. So we would go all the way up, all the way down, and we'd rinse and repeat until no one has ships left, right? Uh, the new way initiative happens is that you set your dials, and then we randomly determine initiative. For anyone who needs it. Oh, no, for in, for the player. And then their six, if if I have initiative and my sixes are, are now better than your sixes. Well, they go first. Yeah. Whether or not that's better or not is, you know, up, up to interpretation. <laughs> Leave it up to the scientists. Yeah. So you have to set your dials not knowing if your ship is going to move before or after your opponent's ship at the same pilot skills. Right. Now, if I have a three and you have a four, my three is still always going to move yeah, first and shoot mind. last. Um, that is a that alone would have been enough of a change that it's a radically different game. Because you like to have initiative ships block other ships. Even just fundamentally, if I have a ship here and you have a ship here, if I don't know who's moving first... Maybe the move I want to take is like to move here. Mm -hmm. But if you end up moving first and you move here, now I move and when you, I bump. And when you bump, you don't get to take your action. Right. So if you know that I'm uh, that you're moving first and we're the same initiative, yep. then you can be like, oh, I'll do this because his best move is forward. And then I'm like, oh, no, he knew my best move, and now I'm hosed. Yeah, and a big part of the game was predicting where your opponent's going to move and yeah. causing them problems. But now if it's like this and you're like, I think he's going to move forward, and it's like, but... We don't know who's got initiative, so do I want to risk a 50% chance that this is the right move? Or do I want to just take a safer, like, yep. straight-up move? And knowing that your opponent is thinking the same thing. A little like, game what's theory. their safest move, right? Okay, little game theory. Um, so that, that's just very uh, different. The other thing is, uh, in a similar vein, used to, uh, let's say, in that same way, you have a six. This general, this, this is, what's his name? Sun Fact. Sun Fact. My Anakin's a six. Uh, so these ships look great, though. Yeah, the prequel ships. These look these great. are pre pre painted and pre built. Mm -hmm. This is how they came. These look exceedingly good. Isn't that crazy? Like this ship is awesome. Yeah. Whatever this is, what yeah. is this called? Uh, that's, that's from the Ge Geonosis Enforcer. Uh, What's a Geonosis? That's the the 
in the Attack of the Clones, they're in the arena. That, that's on Geonosis, and they have a little... Oh, Geonosis is a planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, so it used to be... Let's say I had initiative. We're both at a six. So I move first. Let's say you move here like this. We're facing each other. We can shoot each other. I would get a shoot first. All pilot skills at the same skill. Actually, it's simultaneous. So I shoot first, but you still get a shoot even though I blow you up because it's supposed to happen all at once, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in, let's just say, I moved here and then you came and you bumped. Historically, when you bumped, if you were base to base with something, you can't shoot it. Yeah. So another huge change is that you can actually shoot things when you're base to base. Okay. So that bumping isn't just like end of your No turn. action, but can shoot. That's right. Now there's other other things about bumping. Let me, hold on, let me get, uh, let me get, somebody's asking, Mindagus. Strelkowskis. Wow, that's a fantastic name. Uh, when, when Battletech CCG, just want to let you know, we have played Battletech on the channel. You can find that by searching YouTube. Battletech. Battletech TCG, I think, is actually what it is. And probably Team K. So, yeah, you can find that. It's a great game. Love it. Richard Garfield. Great. So, there's also other uh, bits of this. Let me find it really quick. Uh, okay. So, when you bump an enemy ship... You skip the action steps, so you don't get to focus, evade, barrel roll, that kind of stuff. You can perform red focus and calculate actions. So what? Why? Yeah. Uh, Why did you do it like that? So I'm sure red, there's a good reason. Red but... focus and calculate just means that it's stressful for you to do it. So is that in, reflected in nope. it? So if you have the focus icon, you can take a focus, but it, you have to stress to do it. Okay, so things get more stressful if you bumped. But you can still do them. That's right. The, okay. the, those mm -hmm. particular things, which is focus and calculate, which is kind of the droid version of focus. Um, the ship can't perform additional actions during its activation. So any other ship that could give it an action or anything that gives it free actions. Like um, I have... Let me find it. This is this is going through me as if I'm a colander right now. Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll rehearse it when we actually are getting into it. Anyways, uh, now here's another thing. Used to, if you bumped your own ship, nothing, no penalty. No, no, no bad thing. Which and is what led to, I know that led to castling or yeah. uh, or what do they call it? Tower. Uh, ta towering. Turtling. Turtling. Yeah, where you could basically have ships that have one forwards do this. That was a just... fun moment for X-Wing. That was a good yeah. time. I, uh, yeah. well, I won't get into that drama. Same side where you just do a loop on your same side. And yeah. You yeah, totally. You just spin in circles. Yeah, who, who needs to maneuver anyway? Uh, so check this out. When you bump a friendly ship, you skip your action step. You also roll an attack die. So there's these red attack dice. That's what they look like. Um, if you roll a hit, you take a damage. Great. So you can hurt yourself yeah. by by being uh, annoying at this game. If you roll a crit, which is it looks like a hit but with an open circle in the middle, you just take one damage. So you don't actually take a critical. From okay. It. So it's an on/off switch, one or zero. But if you bump into your own ship, you roll a die, blank, nothing happens. Yeah. Right. If you hit a hit like that, boom, one cool. damage. And the damage in next swing is a lot. Okay. So don't bump. Do not bump. Uh, then there's also just other fortressing. That's right. There it is. That won't matter that much. So um, that also punishes players like me who are going to be very bad at this. But it stands to reason you should be punished for running into your own stuff. Yeah, yeah, I did. Don't. I mean, this is flying 101. Don't, don't run into your own don't, stuff. Don't bump, right? Yeah. Um, so I think the the way for us to do this is uh, to get into it, uh, right? Yeah, the Zach Bunn method. Yeah, because um, there's a lot of cards. If we had to read through all this and figure it all out. No, uh, who this needs is... that when I can just fly? Yeah, that's, uh, that's how I'm feeling. So how do you know which dial goes where? Well, are they all the same dial? Uh, those three are the same because those are three of the same ship. Yeah. And then this should actually say... Uh, 228? NTX on the back. What do you think is the ship type? Okay. You said you said it was what? 228? Two, 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 B22. <laughs> Maybe, actually. Yeah, I think it was here. This one now that you know this is a quite what how does this how does are you supposed to do it like this then if you don't know what your ships are B22 uh, how do I know that what's a B hold on what's this uh, General Grievous is how do you know I'm pulling up his stat card did General Grievous did he fly in the in the films. I don't know. I, don't, I remember him being on the ground and, and spinning like six lightsabers. That's all that I remember of General Grievous. 
actually had some of the better lines in that movie. NTX is sun fac. Okay. Okay. Great. And then B twenty two is grievous. NTX is sun fac. These guys are all B D F or V O F. Uh, the ship is a Nantex, so that's why it's NTX. Nantex yeah. sun fac NTX. And all of my uh, dials are the exact same ship. So that's going to work. Damn, Jan M. I remember your streams. It was when I started playing this game some six years ago. That's wild. That's why we're here again today. Uh, all right, check this out. We're going to play a, a pretty simple scenario. And I'm going to walk you through it real quick. And then we're just going to get ships on the table and start flying around. Let's go. And figuring Let's start out. going. Let's shoot. Uh, this is called uh, Assault at the Satellite Array. So take control of the satellite array before the enemy forces do. There are going to be five satellites, uh, which I have. These things. Nice versions. Yeah. Uh, player is three by three. They're going to be six asteroids and stuff. So I'm going to get some of those out. Remember asteroid placement being like Hyper -critical. super important? Is that still the case? You still have to get your templates out and like yeah. may act like you're business. good at it. Three, four, five. The Bibulab is Grievous' ship. That's what the B-22 means. It's the Bibulab-22, I guess. I'm with it. Uh, so we got our asteroids. Place follow the set of rules found in the rules reference with the following exceptions. Place obstacles at the start of the place obstacles step. Place at one satellite at the center of the play area. So we're just going to get pretty close Looks here. about middle, then. All right. Uh, place one satellite in the center. Then starting with the first player, players take turns placing the remaining four satellites at range three of the center satellite and beyond range two of each other satellite. So it's got to be this far from any of these other things. And it's got to be at least three. It's got to be within three, uh, but beyond two. Within three. Within yeah. three, but so, beyond two. So, Well, it's got to be beyond two of the other ones, yeah. So oh, okay. we'll just put one here. Yeah, just, just, just put, them, put them out there. Can we just do like a star? Genie one star? Yeah. Like this kind of a situation? Cross, etc. Three? I don't know. Are we playing Age of Sigmar? Are we just figuring this out there's as we four, go? There's four of these things. Yeah, so, so yeah. Do it. Oh, there's only four? Yeah, there's one in the middle and four. So I think we go with the corners. You know what I mean? So like. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I'll put that over there. And then. Yeah. And then we're going to place some asteroids. Normally, you would take turns placing these, but I'll let you place all of them. They have to be at least uh, range one from each other. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. But you can divide them. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I know enough to know that. It says it needs to be at least range two from the edge. We got it. Uh, obstacles can't be placed overlapping a satellite. Fine. Scoring. All right. So at the start of the game, each player earns mission points equal to their opponent's deficit. So if you had less than 20 points out, I would score points equal to that. Okay. Which you don't. So Great. it's fine. Yeah. Uh, at the start of the end phase, each player earns one mission point for each satellite they control. A player controls a satellite if they have more ships at range one of the satellite than any other player. When determining control of a satellite, medium and large ships each count as two ships. Okay. And we, we have all smalls. All smalls. Keeping it simple. When a ship is destroyed or removed from the game, the opposing player earns mission points equal to the squad point value of that ship. So you blow up a ship, score that many points. At the end of each turn, for every ship uh, you have within, like if it's within one of the satellite, oh, yeah. if I have more within one of this thing, uh, then I score a point. Yeah, this is great too. Scenarios like this are pretty cool in next one because you have to keep moving. Yep. Like in normal miniatures games, you can just stick a model there and they just sit to, there. They're yeah. in motion yeah. forever. And if you want to stay in range, maybe you have to turn your back to their other ships and all of a sudden you're getting shot at. And you just start merry-go-rounding. Yeah, it's really, satellite. really huh. interesting. Uh, victory at the end of the end phase. If only one player has ships remaining in play, they win. At the end of the end phase, if one player has 20 or more mission points and has more mission points than their opponent, the game ends. At the end of the game... At the end of the 12th round, the game ends. At the end of the game, if both players have at least one ship remaining in the play area, the player with the most mission points wins. Scenario rules, uh, scenario feature, et cetera, et cetera, satellite. Did uh, you say 12 uh, rounds? Yeah, it's not going to take 12 rounds. <laughs> do you have as many points as I do? We both have 20 points. You're going, this is going to be a slaughter. I don't know why you say that. 
Because I can't fly. Well, that's fine. You you have that kind of like lizard memory where like you know what a two curve puts you at. I I probably do. Yeah. Uh, so we place our ships within uh, range one of the uh, board edge. You're gonna use that side. I'll use this side. I presume. Sure. Here, give me a give me a one two, and then I can use the one on that. Or yeah. Gotcha. All right. Well, what I'm gonna do. Yeah, these models are still being produced. Yeah. Uh, Noibidi. Does that mean nobody? 137? Noibidi. Yeah, it's still being produced. It's still a very active game happening. I'm going to look at me, dude. I'm going to fly in formation over here. Come on now. Yeah. We're going to swoop he, in. Steven and acts like he didn't do hundreds of hours of commentary for X Wing. I know what it looks like to fly well. It's in your brain. Is Sun Fact my best ship? Six pilot skill, probably. But I, I have not read through all of the cards, you know? I agree with the backwards or see where. <laughs> it's up to you. Off to a great start. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Where's old Will Wheaton giving us a contract already? He's coming back. He said, mm. you know what? Is he coming back? No, he, but he will. He was well, around for a hot minute. He'll say, you know what? I, I honestly just went off the air with Tabletop because these guys were doing it better. Uh, and so I'm instead going to sponsor them. I do understand why he would be intimidated by our general presence. Um, is the, if I hit the satellite, are there consequences? <laughs> can I hit this? You can hit the hit the fire out of that. I can't. No, you're serious. There's no consequences? I don't think so, no. Running into a satellite doesn't have consequences? What am I supposed to do? Let me look. Same features have Mario that's placed in the play... To facilitate scenario play, scenario features are objects. Are you objects. speaking English? Scenario features are <laughs> objects but cannot be moved, attacked, damaged, locked, or destroyed. It must specifically stay in a scenario world. Scenario features do not obstruct attacks. So I don't think there are obstructions or obstacles. All right. Well, there we go. We did it. We, we're, I'm flying right over that thing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we will go ahead and just start the game. First thing we're going to do is set our dials. Yeah. So for each ship, uh, you set a dial. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now, how do we know what's one, two, three, or in my case, one, nine, eight, seven, nine, eight? Is that three, on the card? Six, five, five. Can I write it on the card? You can write it on the card, yeah. Or can I maybe do like a. That's fine too. I'll do a, a D8 here. It can give me seven. This will give me six. And this <laughs> Dr. Dope. Five. Eat it, Whedon. <laughs> yeah, got him. Uh, okay, so then number seven, who are you? Well, we'll put them in order, I guess. Yeah, and a apparently there's also new rules for the obstacles. Um, they all hurt. The, an asteroid, I think, is this essentially the same. Uh, does someone have the... I, it's not on the list of changes I was looking at, but what is a... Uh, uh, what happens when you hit an asteroid? I won't be doing that, but just in case f someone does it. You know why uh, six was scared of seven? Um. <laughs> all right, hold on. We're seven anyway. There's seven. Also, be aware that that pilot skill six ship that you have only has a uh, bullseye arc. Yeah. Well, luckily, they gave it to the expert pilot. That's right. You don't need much when you can uh, be awesome. Mmm. These ships don't move forward except at a two because they're fast. I understand. Okay. Well, I got, Man, I'm a clever guy. It's crazy to be back in this. I'm a clever guy. He's a... Uh... Clever guy. So this goes here. Mm -hmm. And then you, number eight, you're going to take her easy. You're going right there. Yeah. Yeah, you want a mm. piece of me here. These, uh, figuring out what maneuvers you do and don't have on these ships is kind of funny. Yeah. My favorite thing about these dials is how easily, when I reveal it, I can slide it to a different maneuver. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you do that on streaming, you become famous. <laughs> I think that's the right word. Maybe it's infamous. Uh, and the blue is the clear the the stress, right? Clear the stress. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. The apparently, if you go over a asteroid, used to you would not get an action. You'd roll a die and take a damage if you got a hit or a crit. Now. If you go completely through it, you still get to take an action, but you do take the opportunity to maybe take a damage. Oh, no. Apparently, if you go through an asteroid, it's one damage, period. And then you roll. Uh, 
Wow, that's bad. So when you go through an asteroid, or hit an asteroid, you take one damage and you roll a die. And you take the results of the die. But if you go completely through the asteroid, you still take a damage and roll a die to maybe take another damage. You might take two. But you still, be a lost take, an, ship. You still get to take an action. Well, thank goodness for that. Um, okay, hold on. i got to read some text real quick. Okay. Grievous. So my, my plan was... As I'm activating my ships, I will just read through everything on that ship. Well, but I don't know where it needs to be. I don't oh, know what true. role it that's has true. to play. I'm willing to YOLO it a little more. Yeah, I'm joining the stream and spin one. I, 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 yeah, I would like your plan better, actually, now. All right, let's do it. Yeah, okay. So Yahtzee. My, my, we set it out. Then we're going to randomly determine uh, who is first. So... You want D6? On an attack die, there are three hits and one crit. So if there's a hit on the attack die... I will have initiative. It's 50 50. I don't trust you rolling that die. <laughs> See? <It's, laughs> it works every time. <laughs> we, can, we can go evens odds. I'll, I'll give it to you. Roll a d6. Oh, no. I've already put it away. That's fine. Oh, it's too late now. Right, so you get the hit, so you get initiative. All right. So that means I, my lowest is a three. What's your lowest? I have all threes and then a six and a four. Okay. So I have three, five, five, six. Okay. So the only thing that will overlap is the threes and the six. And the six and the six aren't going to see each other. The threes might eventually make yeah. contact. So here's my three. Over there, yeah. Which is a Sokatana. So I'll go ahead and reveal the dial. And I chose a three forward. So I'll grab the three forward template. I will hold the base of the ship down, lock the template in, and she will move right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read everything that's on my Sokatana stat card. Ahsoka Tano snips. After I fully execute a maneuver, I may choose a friendly ship at range 0 to 1, and I may spend one force. That ship may perform an action even if it's stressed. So Is that... can? Are you a friendly ship to yourself? Uh, I think I said another. A friendly ship at 0 to 1. You know what? She might be a friendly ship. She's friendly. Everyone's friendly to... Well, that's not true. Not everyone's friendly to themselves. I, uh... I've been to Coney Island. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, okay. You can't imagine what that means? What's Coney Island? Oh, what? what? Like in New York? What? The hot dog stand, man. Oh. Have you, I've been to you Coney Island. You know what Coney is, right? Yeah. Hot dog with bunny. chili and mustard and onions. Yeah. A little shredded cheese. Yeah, I've totally been to Coney Island. There's the Coney Islander, I think, here in Tulsa. I'm trying... Wh where's the line between Coney Islander and people not being kind to themselves? Uh, by eating that food, it's not always the best experience. Ooh, I see. Yeah. You wouldn't know that because you only eat apples and, like, overnight oats. Now. Whole food plant-based. Let's go. I'm glad that you gave me that segue. So, <laughs> one thing I want to talk to everyone about here... <laughs> <laughs> the gospel of overnight oats. Uh, no, no. I'm trying to find force tokens. Do you have anything with the force? <laughs> <laughs> That's not how the force That's works. That's not how Star Wars works. Uh, it's this icon I, right I here. I think I only have robots. It's like a little lotus. No, I, I'm, I'm raw efficiency. Okay. And does the little up arrow on the force icon mean... I forgot we need to load shields up and stuff too. Does that mean that I replenish one force every turn? Is that right? I yeah. only vaguely remember interacting with the force. Uh, apparently we are friendly to ourselves. So no Con Coney Island for us today. No. But CBS Inc. saying tons of Coney Islanders here in Detroit. Coney Island definitely not sponsoring anything here no. today. But who is is now, Gene. Be sure to drink water if you're drinking any amount of alcohol. Uh, it'll keep you safe and hydrated. Do you Give uh, you a better experience. Do you have any shields? All my ships seem like they have one shield. Yeah, I better. I've got two on Grievous. Generally. Ooh, this seems low. But, again, we're playing small ships, I guess that's not... Ooh, look at these tokens. We did a good job. <laughs> They're awesome. Uh, no other shields? That design is one of the best designs. We we worked that design. We had, like, seven Listen. different editions of that. Oh, it's so good. Jonathan did the 3D uh, ripple effect thing, and we were like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> we love it! Just in case. Oh, the things we never made. Yep. We thought it, we had a million designs for these guys. The, uh, the ship, the... ship markers or whatever. It's not about the things we never made. <laughs> it's about the friends we made along the way. Oh, sweet. What are these for? Uh, you mark the side of the ship. So you oh. can like, mark where it was. So if you get some sloppy templating. Yeah. Some sloppy Joes. 
Hey, do you have anything that has a little lightning bolt on it? That's the charges. I want to get that set up while we're here. Um, is it, does it look like an arrow? It looks like this thing right here. It's very light. Oh, wow. No. Wait. Yes, m uh, tons. Uh, I got two, two, and two over here. Mm -hmm. Let's just get it squared away. This is a miniatures game. Yeah, we back. <laughs> All right, here's lightning bolts. Lightning bolts. You need six lightning bolts? Six total, yeah. CBS, uh, is this video a nostalgia trip or are you gonna start covering X-Wing again? This is a nostalgia trip for May the 4th this year. We have no intention of covering X-Wing in any kind of meaningful capacity moving forward. Uh, not to say that we should or shouldn't, or that you should play it or shouldn't, or anything. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, it's really hard to stream. It was a circus getting this thing ready. Yeah. So it takes up a lot of space. Yeah. And then you end up with, you know, a situation where you can only see Zach's arms. Wait. <laughs> there goes the template. That's not going to be a problem. <laughs> Which I find to be just the best. Um, okay. So, is this in the right uh, place? Am I still? It should be about range two from the middle. So Ahsoka time, uh, I won't trigger that ability. Also, all of my ships have fine-tuned controls. After I fully execute a maneuver, I can spend a force to perform a boost or barrel roll. But it costs me a force. force. Okay, how many force do you have? Are they replenishing? Or She's got two force, and I think she gets one back every round. So, watch yourself. She moved. Uh, I'll take a simple action here. Uh, I guess I can look at the rest of her cards. She has foresight. After an enemy ship executes a maneuver, I can spend a force. Uh, and it's range two bullseye to perform this attack against an opponent. Uh, as a bonus attack, attack you may change one focus result to a hit. Otherwise, your dice cannot be modified. So to so stay out of the front bullseye of that thing. Ahsoka at range two, uh, this thing in her bullseye arc can shoot something if she uses a force. Of course, all these abilities take force, so it is what it is. We also have calibrated laser targeting. While I perform a primary attack if the defender is in my bullseye, I add one focus result. Okay, so don't be in the bullseye of Ahsoka. Yeah, and then her astromech R7A7. A7. While you perform an attack, you may spend one charge to change one hit result to a critical result. I need some <laughs> extra lighting. Uh, and that's all she does. <laughs> Let me tell you, I can recite back to you exactly yeah. what you just said. You know what? When My brain basically said, uh, stay out of the front lane of that ship, period. That's all you need to know, Yeah, honestly. Okay, so... My six? Nope. Your threes. Oh. So she activated. My threes. All right, check this out. Look at this. We're going to split formation, but it's, it's in a beautiful way. So number seven... Has got a two. Breakfast mayonnaise player mod every Sunday. For Breakfast about a year and mayonnaise? Half. Can you get me a two uh, turn, uh, shallow turn? Bank. Is that a bank? That's a bank. And then the other one's a turn? Uh huh. Well, we're already off to a great start here. I've. Look at that. You nailed it. That's right. It's my satellite. Okay. Done. And then I get to take an action. Yep. I can take an uh, oh, yeah, engine that. symbol, uh, target lock. We'll just focus. And evade. What's the name of that thing? Or an arrow. Uh, precise Hunter. Yeah, you want to run down your uh, little stat cards and ability there? Don't I? Um, can you can you tell me what you don't have that symbol? Coordinate. Uh, this one? Or Calculate. The little yeah, so they, don't, they don't have focus. They have Calculate. Because they're robots. Yeah. Um, and I will explain that to you in a second. Uh, does it look like anything in that bag? <laughs> We can just use focus tokens for your uh, calculate. Pilots can calculate using advanced computing power to increase their combat performance. When a ship performs a calculate action, it gains one calculate token. Uh, while a calculating ship performs an attack during the modify attack dice step, it may spend one or more calculate tokens to change that many of its focus results to hits. Does it, can I stack them up forever, or do they go away at the end? All actions go away at the end, right? All actions go away at the end. What's a calculate token look like? I 
don't know. Oh, wait. What's that? Uh, that's not that's not what you're looking for. <laughs> so you can just use focus tokens because you don't have focus tokens. Oh right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just remember. So it's like a mechanical eyeball. It doesn't work like focus tokens. Okay. I'm sure that will not be confusing. Uh, then I can do a barrel roll or a f a arrow pointed this direction. What does that mean? You see this? Uh, that's a barrel roll. But what's the arrow after it, and then the grayed out calculate? Oh, barrel roll into a calculate. I can do that. Mm -hmm. And is this is this faded out for a reason? Uh, it might be stressful. That yeah. would Let make sense. That yeah, I like, bet that's right. You so can, can do both, but it costs you a stress. Okay. Okay. I don't want to do anything. I, I guess I'll just calculate. No? I'll calculate. Uh, cal you're calculating. Okay, number two. Oh wait, I got to tell you what I do. Well, I perform an attack. If the defender is in my bullseye, I can reroll a blank. Okay. I have net worth calculations. While I defend or perform an attack, I can spend a calculate token from a friendly ship and range zero to one to change a focus result to a positive result, basically. Yes. Uh, so if I if they all have calculate tokens, they can share them in whatever way is is good. So you want to stick around each other uh, as a robot army. That makes sense. And then I've got these grappling struts. It, it, Effectively, you start them closed, and then you open them whenever you hit an obstacle, and then... Which you won't be doing. And then I won't be doing that, so I'm not going to worry about it. And then Ion Cannon, if this attack hits, spend one hit or critical result to cause the defender to suffer one normal damage. All remaining results inflict Ion Tokens instead of damage. Mm. And Ion Tokens mean what? When I move... I lose an eye, my ion tokens, and I go one forward, I think. Just like that? Yeah. Um, that said, they did make a change. It won't matter for us. But small ships take one ion token to be ioned. Medium take two, and large take three. Right. Stands to reason. Can you give me three forward? I got it right here. Are these the f Awaken templates? They are from twenty, late 2015, early 2016. Save There's the business. Awakening. You said save the business? Save the business, man. That was like the darkest hour for Covenant. The website went down. Oh, that was a dark hour. That was a dark year. <laughs> then there was an awakening. <laughs> okay, done there. Look at me. I'm, I can't tell you how controlled this satellite is. Man, <laughs> I've never seen a satellite so well controlled. You've never seen robots like this. He only knows that as well. <laughs> And I can I can fly through myself as long as I don't end on myself. That's right. You and we got to do ships. the railroad thing and figure out where ships are end up. Uh huh. Uh huh. We'll get back to that glory in a second. Uh, they're all calculating just as a sign of things to come. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I'm done with my threes. Okay. So my fives now go. We have Plo Koon. At the start of the engagement phase, I may spend a force and choose another friendly ship at range zero to two. If you do, you may transfer a green token to it or transfer one orange token from it to yourself. Whatever. <laughs> After you fully execute a maneuver, spend a force to do a booster barrel roll. I'm glad you got that list. Calibrate a laser targeting. While well, you perform a primary attack, it's the same one. In your primary arc, add a focus. His Astromax C1-10P. <laughs> After you execute a maneuver, you may spend a charge to perform an evade action, even while stressed. During the end phase, if this card has zero active charges, flip it. After you fully execute a maneuver, you must choose a ship at range 0 to 1. It gains a jam token. You just got jams. <laughs> Never going to happen. So Plug Goon's going to move. Uh, two right turn. Why is this dial all the way over there? This is a dial. That's a, this on uh, this an Anakin ship. Uh, that's Plo right there? Yeah. Plo and Anakin are, are in the same ship. What are you doing? What is this? Why are you doing it like that? What do you mean? Why are you flying towards the side suddenly? Well, I don't want to fly at you. Are you bumping the your own stuff? Is that the idea? No. What are you up to here? Why, why are you doing that? Why don't you at least face me or something? No way, dude. Uh, so Plo Koon is... You got a plan, man. You got some kind of a weird plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Why, why, why are you doing that? <laughs> Plo Koon's going to barrel Is that within roll. one? With one, one of what? You can't measure it. You don't know. That's you the, can't measure? That's the secret sauce of X-Wing. Really? He's going to barrel roll, though. So oh. this changed in 2.0, right? He's got the line in the middle, so the barrel roll always has to go here. Mm. It used to be that it could go... It used to be a while out yeah. a little bit, yeah. So he's going to go, 
And then it, he can basically back up to this. So yes, he he's now clearly within range one. Clearly. Clark has moved. Obi Wan Kenobi. Your only hope. <laughs> That's the wrong stat card. Where is he at? <laughs> this is Obi Wan. This is Plo Koon. I need to move Anakin over here. I'm gonna move this stat card. Oh no. You can get us laminated. It'd be really nice if they printed little cards. <laughs> I love the game, but I wish these were little cards instead of pieces of paper. <laughs> Killer. It's really right. good. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Guardian of the Republic. They all have that same thing. Uh, anything different? R4, P17. After you fully execute a rev maneuver, you may spend one charge to perform an action, even while stressed. Cool. Brilliant evasion. While well, you defend, if you are not in the attacker's bullseye, you may spend a force to change two of your eyeball results to evade. Nice. So you're good. Hard to hunt down. He's going to take a two right turn. Uh, I don't like this at all. That's why you hold the template down. Mm. The template did have some motion on it there mm. a little bit. Uh, I gotta if talk. I hadn't hold it down, though, it would have been across the room. <laughs> That's true. All right. They, my fives have moved. We have a four, actually. You're sure not going to barrel first. roll that one. Oh, no. I need to Are you going to take an action? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not going to matter, obviously. Yeah. It's you, the first turn. You just, but... you just do it for uh, posterity. So he's going to take a focus. Yeah. Number four is General Grievous. General Grievous has a three bank. Can you hit me with that? Yeah. You, oh. did, you did all of the maneuvers. <laughs> yeah, man, I wanted to explore the space a little bit. I like bit. it, man. That's not going to put me on that asteroid, <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. If you do this on round one, it's going to be so funny. You just kill your that own Grievous. That definitely icon. was not what I intended. <laughs> Look, it's clean. Clean, clean. Uh, it touches it. I mean, it, it might touch it a little bit, but it's fine, <laughs> isn't it? It's, I'm not going to I'm not gonna allow you to hit a rock on the first turn. But man, in a tournament, that would have been devastating. I got to tell you, these templates don't work like you think they do. <laughs> I thought there was no way I was hitting that yeah, asteroid. Like you thought you were going to be like here? Uh, easily. <laughs> I thought I was well in. I thought I was actually going to be like right here. Yeah. Well, at least you're in range one of that thing, though. So. That was the intent, of course. Yeah. I just thought it would be a little closer. I didn't expect the asteroid to be there. Yeah. All right, you got an action? But I didn't hit it. I flew expertly right next to it. Yeah. yeah. What, what does he do, by the way? General Grievous? Mm hmm. Glad you asked. Well, I perform a primary attack. If I'm not in the defender's firing arc, I can reroll up to two attack dice. While I defend, if the attacker is outside my firing arc, I may reroll one defense dice. While I defend, I may choose a ship obstructing the attack and spend one lightning bolt. If I do, I cancel a hit or a critical result, and the ship I chose gains one strain token. After a ship at range 0 to 3 is destroyed, I recover one lightning bolt. After I fully execute a speed 3 to 5 maneuver, I may spend one lightning bolt to perform a go anywhere boost forward action, even while stressed. Uh, before I would be dealt a face-up ship damage card, I can spend one lightning bolt to discard it instead and attack uh, with the focus, uh, calculate, or target lock symbols. I can spend one lightning if this attack hits. Each friendly ship range one to three of the defender may acquire a lock on the defender, and then I cancel all die results. Wow. Yeah. And I think, I think it means that you... Uh, have to spend. Is this like robot force? Is that what we're dealing with here? No, it, that's energy. So like I have Astromax that have it. Mm, mm -hmm. So that should go t on each of the cards that you have that have that thing. So like each of these has two Oh, they things. have their own little uses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you get X uses. So like my... Uh, oh, okay. So Afterburners, for instance, mm -hmm. has two. And then Impervium Plating has two. And then XX23S thread tracers has two. Okay. Yeah. Okay, if the attacker is outside of my firing arc, while you defend, you may choose. Well, you perform if you are not in the defender's firing arc. Okay. Yeah, so he basically wants to be shooting people that can't see him or vice versa. Yeah, well, that, I want to do that with every pilot. Yeah, it's just right? the default. That's kind of the idea. Uh, I'm going to barrel roll. Okay. Hit me with a B -b barrel. Let me get me get away from this asteroid. It's amazing how bad I am at this game. I will say, going from 
zero to all of this trying to be digested. It's a lot of information. It's a simple matter of spatial understanding, though, you know? It's like, how yeah. long is that? And if I put it at the front of this thing and the back of that thing connects to it, where is it going to end up? Some people either got it or they don't got, got it. Got it or they don't got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Also, so, experience helps. I have initiative. So my Anakin Skywalker is going to go. He's at a six before your six. His dial is a five forward. All right. Let's go. Yeah. He wanted to... He's Wait eager. a minute. Are you going to be able to shoot me? Eager to get into the action. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Let's read what Anakin does really quick. Surely he's not aggressive. Anakin Skywalker, Hero of the Park. Speaking of aggressive, you recently watched Star Wars Episode Three for the very first time. It's time to get there while we're here. Speaking of aggressive. Uh, yeah. Um, how do you feel? That's a great question. It's May the 4th. I feel like this is a relevant Because it's discussion. really more about the feeling of the movie than, than how you thought about the movie. The, the feeling is important if you're going to come away with it. Mm -hmm. Because I thought the movie, uh, you know, objectively, I was surprised. I'll tell you this. I was surprised at how many good scenes there were. Okay. What was the most notable scene for you? There was some kind of an emotional dialogue-driven scene that struck me, and I can't fully remember what it was. Do you remember anybody that was in it? I think the uh, uh, Anakin was in it. Okay. And maybe the Emperor? Are they in the opera house? Yeah. I think Where that's he's, right. He's saying, have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Vader? No. Vegas, well, no, I don't think so. Maybe I love it was that him scene. and Padme. I can't... It, it was like right afterwards it cut to an awful scene of him and Padme saying things that no human beings would yeah, ever like, say to uh, each other. No, it's because I'm so in love with you. That, that actually st struck, it was like a thorn in the paw of my brain. I was right. like, why would anyone speak like this? So so it does have yeah. its moments like that. But on the whole, you know what? It was just a nonstop action movie. <laughs> yeah. It was like a Nicolas Cage, you know, Bruce Willis blowing up stuff 24-7 kind of action movie. It opens movie. with that really... That, the opening always gets me, or did, especially when I first watched it, where they, like, come across that ship and it's that big fight over Coruscant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Massive, it's just, like, yeah. all the way into the fight with Count Dooku and, yeah. like, that whole chase and Grievous is there and it's, like, this killer intro. Dooku was cool. Um... As I said, some of the dialogue was actually awesome. There were scenes that were great. It's like they were written by a different person. And then they had a five-year-old come in and write the other ones. But the other critique that I would have that is not just like a basic, you know, everybody loves it to dump on these movies. But I thought... Yeah, I mean, this is fresh. You haven't had the opportunity for like 30 years. I, I thought overall it was it was not as bad as I was thinking it would yeah. be. Now, you also went in with thinking this was going to be the worst movie of all time. Mm, I, I feel like I've already seen that in Star Wars. So, like, I didn't think it was going to be the worst. You I haven't seen it, episode nine. <laughs> I thought it would be bad, <laughs> you know, like normal bad. It was better than I remembered it in terms of just the prequels and how uh -huh. they functioned. I, I think the whole thing could have been almost 50% better if Yoda's fighting style was better. Like, the last thing I wanted was hyper rolly, uh -huh. crazy, you know, ferret style Yoda. What I wanted was a Yoda that almost never moved. And just simply momentarily at the very last second dodged out of the way, like with a single, like slight movement. Like just couldn't, you just couldn't touch him. Yeah. It's like he's so good at it. Yeah. It's my, not that uh, he's aggressive, it's just that he's, uh, he's, he's better than you. My long time desire out of Yoda would have been if he had just not had a lightsaber. Yeah, exactly. The only thing he has is the force. And, does, and, and honestly, just doesn't, just wears the opponent. It's like a keto, right? It's like you should just. Literally just be like, you don't understand how how foolish you are for pursuing this course of action. Yeah. And I'm just going to like not let you have any of it yeah. until you just stop. Swing the saber at him and just... Yeah, it's it just like, way. it, it disappears. Like, no. Yeah, it's yeah. like, how much cooler would that be? Yeah. How much cooler would that have been? Mm -hmm. it, it gets that character actually developed so that when you see it in Dagobah, it's like, oh, yeah. whoa. Anyway. Yeah. Interesting. But... it's cr I, can't, I can't imagine it's like... So it's so in the cultural reality of our existence, and then just not having seen it. And I will. I'll have I quote to, it all the time inadvertently. Let me. Is there any place that lists scenes of movies, like ScenCollector.com or something? I mean, I'm sure there's like a, even a plot summary that's scene by scene. Let me. Let me at least look. Um, let me at least look. Scene like scene structure of episode. Yeah. Episode three. 
But go ahead, you move your ships, etc. Yeah. Uh, Anakin moving. Let me read what he's doing. After I full execute maneuver, if there's an enemy ship, am I not doing it? Brilliant innovation. While I defend, if you are not in the attacker's bullseye, I may spend a force to change two of your results to focus. I think I may have read this earlier for Obi Wan. Nope, they both have brilliant invasion, that's why. And calibrated <laughs> laser targeting. What's R2D2 do? After you activate, you may spend an energy and gain a deplete token to repair one damage card. Recover, recover shield or remove a device at range 0 to 1. That's crazy. Um, so, Annie is just going to focus. Uh, Torres is saying maybe Grogu will fight like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Count Dooku using his anger. Anakin does the stuff. Explosion. Grievous shows up. Grievous was fine. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the, the effects have not aged perfectly, but yeah. you get the idea. It, that movie has aged way better than most movies from 2003. Yeah. It's a weird robot. That's... I I think it was, it was ultimately, it was some scene with, uh, I think it was a scene with Anakin and Padme. One of it my, was a sad scene. One of my favorite scenes is when she's telling him that she's pregnant. Maybe that was it. It's a very small scene. But Maybe that was it. The emotions that cross his face in like a second and a half are really impressive, which makes me like <laughs> he 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 got a lot of uh, hate back in the day. Hayden did, yeah. For like all the prequel hate went to him and the actor played Jar Jar. I think I think they were all working with an absolute trash heap. Yeah, like deli I don't know how you ever deliver the line. No, it's because I'm more in love with you, or whatever he says. It was, so, like, un it was so unnecessary. Yeah, or like... Why did he say it like that? I, I quote it all the time, and it's like, I have secured peace for my <laughs> new empire. And then he's like, if you're not with me, you're against me. And just that kind of stuff. And like when he's like, my powers have doubled since we met last. <laughs> since we met last. <laughs> it's like, The what? high ground stuff, you know, uh, the but, classic. Yeah. It's just like... Don't do it, Anakin. I have the high, high ground. ground. After after 12 minutes of the most insane lightsaber fight in ever, it's like... And of course, that's all, an easy target. But all that crazy stuff we did, don't try this one. Yeah. Don't do this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's 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 ultimately uh, questionable. All of it. But I will Am I say, moving? Yeah, you're six. I will say... Sun uh, fact, let's go. If you watch oh, it, with, this wasn't what I chose. If you watch it, seriously, look at how easy that is. If you watch it with uh, your eight-year-old nephew, or as an eight-year-old, give me the five there, and five forward. Yeah. Or <laughs> if you Just watch it, it out. Uh, without taking it too seriously, you that's just what I in. did. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually like you know what that was. That was a fine time. I had a fine time with that. Had some highs, had some lows, and you can take the the awkward scenes it, once they become comedic. And they're not actually attacking your identity as a person, as a Star Wars fan. Yeah, yeah, it's really good, quite. It's good like, okay, it. yeah, I can get into this. <laughs> um, we're gonna do. <laughs> blank says, to be fair, he did have the high ground. Also, Blank <laughs> said earlier, I meant to mention it, that you fly X-wing ships like his wife drives. <laughs> <laughs> blank. Uh, oh yeah. That three bank on the road is not the same as you would think either. Unfortunately, uh, Ice Falcon saying apparently Hayden Christensen almost said he almost died because of the role. Like, mentally. Like, uh, I know wow. the Jar Jar actor as well. Um, I think his name's Amish. Same thing, because, like, everywhere he went was just, like, people were very... Yeah. Well, Ro uh, wasn't Rose and Finn both dealing with that now recently? Particularly Rose. Uh, John Boyega had... He did some things that were unpleasant as a person. Just oh. his commentary towards people that were saying certain stuff. So that's a little different. But, yeah, Kelly Marie was, like... No, it's not. This yeah, isn't not their fault. Those characters did suck, though. <laughs> Straight up. Got any casinos? <laughs> all right. Uh, so we've all moved. Yeah. Now we're into the first round of the game. <laughs> um, so I have initiative. So my six, Anakin, has a chance to attack. He has a standard firing arc, range three. Uh, so I'm going to look. Yeah, Grievous is in range. And I'm trying to find the nearest point from your ship to my ship. It goes through a rock. And it goes through a rock. That's right. Um, so, has that changed? I, uh, it used to be, uh, what do you call that? What was the term for? Uh, Obstacle? Obstructed. Obstruct obstructed. Shot let's, uh, let's look up obstructed. Finn could have been so cool. Yeah. Could have really been could've... so cool. Conflicted. Yeah, so you roll one additional mm -hmm. die. Yeah. 
you're going to roll one additional defense die. So I'm looking at Anakin the Skywalker stat card. And somewhere, it's going to tell me how many dice he rolls. Two. Is that accurate? Is it weak? Oh my god, it's only roll two dice? Dude, you're weak. How am I supposed to do any damage? I'm too weak. Is that what the, the little uh, attack symbol is? The arc symbol? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's rolling two dice. You're going to get to roll a bonus defense die mm -hmm. because it's abstracted. So I'll roll and my Is dice. that the little arrow? That's the two. Like if I look at General Grievous's card here, is that what that stat is? I have no clue. It's got to be. It, it has to be, right? Yeah, it has to be. I think so because they all have it. You you have all of you have attacks and defense stats, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's got to be it. Okay, so I'm gonna roll two dice, and uh, here's how this works. Oh, and it's range. Oops. <laughs> range three, so you'll get an extra die from being at an extra at range. So uh, there are various ranges. If you're at range one, I get an extra attack die. Range two is normal. Range three, you get a bonus defense die. Right, right. It's also going across the uh, asteroid, so you'll get a bonus defense die for that. Okay. So roll my two dice. I got a critical and a focus token, so or a focus result. So then now I have a chance to modify my dice. You modify before I roll? Yep. So, yeah, you don't know because then you could not spend and stuff. So I'll spend my focus token, and it changes all my focus results to hits. So it's one hit, one crit. You're rolling four dice. You got two focus tokens. Now, Grievous has uh, some weird stuff to modify his dice, right? He has one, at least one thing. Uh, while you defend, uh, if the attacker's outside your firing arc, you may reroll one defense die. And then Treacherous, while you defend, um, choose a ship obstructing the attack. There's not a ship obstructing the attack, right? Yeah, that's right. And then have Impervium. Before you would be dealt a face-up ship damage card, that would be a critical, right? Mm -hmm. You may spin one to discard it instead. Wow. So that cancels the damage entirely? Mm -hmm. All of it? Yeah. Um, oh, so you have the goodness. ability. I'm I am outside your firing arc. So you good choice. Oh, and I still blank. Uh, Did they change the odds on these? Or <laughs> I don't think so. No. no, greens just blank a lot. You know what I mean? Just Interesting. How it feels. Yeah. Um, so it's a hit and a crit. You rolled so, no of eight. Uh, let me let me just make sure I'm understanding this. So your two dice have the same odds of hitting a hit as mine do of hitting an evade? They don't. No, there's slightly better chances of hitting hits than okay. evades. So if you look at uh, an evade die, there are three evade symbols out of eight. Okay. There are three blanks and two focus sides. Mm, so on three a, evade, that's less than 50%. On an attack die, there are three hits and one crit, and there are two blanks and two focuses. Okay. So I had a focus token. So I have 75% of each one being a hit or a focus. Yeah. Um, when you are defending and you don't have a focus token, it's five out of eight are not going to provide any sort of yeah. result whatsoever. So it, yeah. the game does lean towards damage happening. Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay, so things have happened. I'm taking two yeah. damage. So you're taking a hit and a crit, but you have two shields. And I'm going to... Can I activate my impervium? No, because I'm not technically going to take the card yet. That's right. All yeah. right, two shields are down. So you lose the two shields. Wow, bad. On turn one. Yikes. <laughs> Yikerones. Okay. So then uh, my six is activated. Now your six is going to get activate. Uh, okay. And I'll be doing that after I keep my phone from uh, getting away from Cheesy Poops. The chat. Says make sure you make the pew pew sounds when attacking. And Listic saying, yeah. Uh, no, Andrew saying, I am hearing the disturbing lack of sound effects. Yeah, well, can't be everything to everybody. Okay. Okay. Blogger I used to watch when I was playing, and we put in awesome like you can take a picture of the board, but then add in really cool visuals like lasers. Yeah, and nice. Oh, out. I remember. I know what's happening. Uh, can my six actually shoot anything, Zane? Um. Oh no, because it's just got the bullseye art. Right. It cannot. So moving on. Yeah. Uh, so my fives are facing this side of the board. They also can't shoot anything. Um. My four. There's no four. You have a four. I don't think I, I think can't they, shoot anything. I think yeah. they were just saying that they could they weren't hearing the same pew pew. Not that they couldn't actually hear us. Oh right, right, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh Grievous I'm doesn't have anything in his arc, so he's not gonna get to be able to shoot. Your three is also out of range, it's very normal for turn one. My three looks like it's a little short. <laughs> yeah, you bet. 
just a uh, <laughs> hair's width. Uh, that'll be the end of the round. So all tokens uh, fall off of our ships. And then we calculate points at the end of the round. So I have more ships in range of this. I have more ships in range of this. You have more ships in range of all three of those. Just mark it three points, man. So, X Wing score. Zach, mark it three. Steven, three. And we are off to the races. I'm going to die. So we've done it. We have done it. Lose all your focus tokens, and then uh, we're back to dials. And again, we do not know who has initiative. And you think that's a... Is that a good change? Do you like that? Honestly, I have no idea. Sun Fact should have a turret arc that you can shoot from as well. Does that matter? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, pinpoint tractor array. You cannot rotate your turret to your back arc. After you fully execute a maneuver, you may gain one tractor token to perform a turret move action. Let me get you a turret token. Let's see. I've got a turret as well. How do I shoot that? It's just like a, a it should have a stat next to it. Let me grab you a turret real quick. I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it does. It can be forward, left, or right. Is it the ensnare thing? At the end of the if you are tractored, you may choose a ship in your arc at range zero to one, transfer one to it. It has ensnare, okay. So I'm supposed to get up close and personal here. Execute a maneuver, gain a tractor token, and then at the end of the activation phase, you pass it off in zero to one, okay. So you tractor up all of these ships. Got it. Two die attack from my turret. Where do I find that? Hangar 19, or Matthias. Should we be surprised this was a competitive game? Imagine there were tons of judge calls, less than you'd think, honestly. In the finals and stuff, a lot of times they'd have Davey come in and like move the ships properly, but if they were colliding and stuff, for sure. Apparently he's got two attacks somewhere. We, do, we don't know where. So. Oh, it's right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so you have a turret, okay. and you can take an action to change the facing, but it's saying that you can't face it behind you. Yeah. So it's essentially a turret that can face front, left, or right. You can also choose which way it starts. So like you could have it start. I'll, I'll start it front. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a... Yeah, so a turret can, can basically go out of your front arc at, uh, should, should say a range on there. That's a standard shot, right? One, two, three? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then uh, you roll the number of dice right there. Okay. Uh, okay, then all the actions clear, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Done, 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 done. And then we go to the dials. And we Wait. don't know who's doing what ultimately. That's right. I feel like I'm about to hit an asteroid again. Can you, can you show me a turn, a short turn template? A one? Yeah. The way I picture it is a one turn will basically you're like if you were one turning to the left here. Yeah, if he was one turning to the left, his back corner is going to be touching this corner. Mm. So oh, like that's he'll, handy. He'll Did they tell you that in the box or anything, or do you just figure that out? You just figure that out. That seems really important to know. Yeah. So like, spent some amount of time. <laughs> uh, just having ships on the table and like, because like you can also do this thing as an example. Let me see this one turn. Like if I take this ship and then uh, no pre measuring, dude. If I grab another ship, so it's not not touching, right? But like, it's this angle. I've been lied to already. Yeah, so it's this angle. You know what I mean? Uh huh. So yeah. it's like a little forward, but then like straight along that. And the turns all do that. So if you take a three turn, it's the same. Because like the, the white base is actually, I'm just gonna grab this Anakin real quick. So like, let me show you. So like the base itself is gonna get even closer. 
but like the three, it's that same. It's the same line. It's the same angle. Yeah. I remember when we were making templates, we figured out all the angles and stuff. Yeah. And so there is a standard there. OK. So OK. Ergo, um, I'm going to wreck you. Your dice I'm going to put over there. Okay. And then sun, sun, fac. It's the it's the banks. It's the banks. They're the problem here. It's so hard to play this game. I remember that now. We're back. Yeah, I remember. I'm like lined up to an asteroid here. He's got turns, surely, right? He got some turns. But how big? Can you show me what it's? There are some people being like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm ready. All right. Uh, I have a th oh roll an attack by. If it hits, you have initiative. Boom, you have initiative. So my lowest is a three. You have threes, your threes go first. Okay. Three number seven. And your dang space is crazy. It's doing a one. Mm, woo. He's rolling real close. Look at that. Uh, yeah, it's not that's not hold a on, hold on. right. I think you can yeah, 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 look at that. You have now how do you how much do you pl have play with you this? Can, you can as long as it gets inside those two things, you put it where you want it. No way. Okay. That there's, seems... there's a little bit of uh, movement there. It's nice to have some old worn out ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some some <laughs> worn down ones. That's part of what made the plastic so good, right? Is that they don't wear down. I'm a barrel roll. I was going to say, if you don't, that's going to be a painful rock in a second. Yeah. These things, things are moving around like crazy, like spring loaded. Okay. He did, Andrew. Done. Okay. Your other threes. Uh, yeah. Uh, number eight is five up. You'll never see. You didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> you never saw this coming. He's racing. Uh, I'm going to move the other one while I'm here. They're both going to get focused. Oh, yeah. Man. Or whatever, whatever the equivalent robot version. Dude, these ships look so cool. I got to get a shot of this. I found in my experience watching X-Wing, it's best when you fly past your opponent. Yeah. Well, I guess a thing. All right, done. Complete. Okay, uh, so my three, Ahsoka Tano. Snips. She's going What's to... a Snips? That's her nickname. Oh. Is that so from she, Rebels or something? Because she's snippy. Yeah. Just Anakin, put that satellite wherever you want. Like. Anakin calls her Snips. She's an angsty preteen. When he first meets her, uh, uh, redundancy of terms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's gonna focus, and then your four goes. Grievous, I'm afraid Grievous is about to die. Uh, interesting. Hangar saying the droids can use the grappling struts to land on the rocks without taking damage and still shoot. Yeah, they've got rock powers. You said you're afraid Grievous is about to die. How much health does he have? I know Grievous is about to die. Uh, I don't know. He's got that plating and stuff. Can we get what the kids say out of arc? Is that what can, you can, do you see the Grievous card over there, Price? Yeah. Well, how's his health? Is it... Two and three. Two shields, three health. I'm just trying to see where that's at on these cards. <laughs> <laughs> what if I've been bamboozled? <laughs> what about Anakin Skywalker? One and three. What's that minus three up there? Do you see this? Is it up here? Is it this? Because it's like shield and then a number. Does that make sense? Hmm. Well, like the one and three on Anakin doesn't doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I can't can't help you there. Um, 
a speed three to five maneuver. Oh, okay. Uh, over, over to you, that's my four. Okay, uh, my fives, we'll go with Plo Koon. He's taking a two left turn. Uh, he will focus. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, taking a one left turn. He will also focus. Interesting. You're, <laughs> you're six. You have an issue. I mean, I have no idea what I did with this guy. Uh, two bank. Is this a bank? No, it's a bank. Ooh. If I don't, I'm hitting that ship, aren't I? I think you'll fit. Maybe. Oh, he bumped. All right, let's read the rules. As a strategic bump. Bump ain't easy. Friendly ships bumping. It's exactly as I predicted. I am still as bad at this as I remember. Skip the action step. Roll an attack die. On a hit or a crit, you suffer one damage. No damage. Focus. No damage whatsoever. Strategic bump. Do I still take an action? You don't get an action. Or is it a stressful action? Uh. Or is that just asteroids? When you friendly bump, it's you don't get an action. Okay. When you enemy bump then is when you can take the red action. Okay. So if it's your fault, there's no grace. Yeah. <laughs> Done. That's just bad. Uh, Anakin is taking a 5k turn. Mm. Have I done this part? No, I haven't. I'm just out, Arnie. And that's stressful. So you will get a stress. Man, I almost bamboo... I, I think I... I think I can shoot you. You maybe can. Corner to corner? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, come on. Hey, wait, you got a straight edge or a laser or something? You tell me. Is that lined up or not? Yeah, it's totally lined up. It's just out of range. What a beautiful, beautiful maneuver by who? whatever big brain put this ship right here. I'm just saying. Anakin? Yeah, look at him. He just, he's in range one of this thing now. He, you can't even shoot him. If you go first next turn, he's right behind you. Trapped. Anyways, just just brilliance. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's keeping track. <laughs> uh, okay, so starting with m your six because you have initiative. Yeah, you can. Shoot. Can I shoot you? You can shoot. Do I have? Is this uh, in the way? Is it an opposing ship? No, nope. no. Nope. It's just hanging out. You can shoot through, shoot through ships. Here's this. If, do I have a bullseye on you? I don't think I do. Um. Can you shoot at range three? I don't know. Can I, how do I know that? Can I? Uh, hey, Why can't I? You, it's, you, you got it. So he can uh, attack Obi Wan Kenobi. Not this guy. Well, it's because I'm not in your bullseye. You're sure. Wait, my fr I have a front arc on the turret though. You can you could use the turret on either of these characters. Can I do both, or do I have to choose one? You choose one. Hmm. You cannot retain your. Okay. What does Sun fact you? Keep up, Obi Wan Kenobi. Hello there. Three. <laughs> Speaking of Obi-Wan Kenobi, ooh, that trailer that dropped this morning, I won't say anything. I won't say, I'll say no spoilers. My greatest hope for Star Wars is that they will move on, right? I would love new time zones, new time frames, new characters, new planets, new stories, get rid of the Jedi. Can you, can you give me the, the three, the, the targeting template? Yeah. Um, and totally new, but I will say, getting more Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi, is the one acceptable area that they could just keep going and making more content. They could overdo it, honestly, but I'm excited about it. Do you it would think be spicy? Gets to the end, and then it like zooms out, and it's Alec Guinness sitting there in the hut on Tatooine, and he's like remembering stuff. He's like, that'd be cray. <laughs> so if I do my front bullseye, I roll an extra die, but you roll an extra defense die. Yeah. If I do my turret, I roll two, and you don't roll an extra. But attack die are better than defense die, so I should always take the one for one trade, right? Yeah. Is there anything f funky on your card that's relevant? Um, Just when I defend, if I'm not in the attacker's bullseye, but I am. Yeah. Uh, after I execute a red maneuver, etc. Mm, start of my engagement phase, spend a force. If I do engage at initiative seven, not gonna do that. 
I have a focus token. I get to roll an extra die. Um, yeah, odd, wait, are odds better in one direction or I You would add an attack die over adding a defense die. Or instead not. I do have a focus token, though, so the more dice you give me. Yeah, and then it's just kind of a weird thing. But if I use it here, I won't use it on offense. All right, let's go on Obi-Wan. A crit. A singular crit. Okay, so I have three defense dice. Oh, wrong color. Three defense dice. You're at range three, so I get to add a fourth one. Mm. And you have one crit. I rolled one evade, two focus, but... My evade covers up the crit, so I don't need to do anything yet. Okay. Okay. Done. So my six uh, can't see anything, so he will not shoot. Uh, my fives are going to get a go. We're going to start here with old Plo Koon. He is at range one of number... Let's put that wherever. Eight, I think. <laughs> right? Is that number eight? Uh, that is number eight. Why, why do I have six, five, six, seven? Well, that's not right. Uh, okay, so this is seven, this is eight, and this is nine. Eight, and then nine. Okay. Okay, so you're attacking eight right here. Number eight, yep. And I have usually two dice, but I get an extra attack die because I'm at range one. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. None of my abilities uh, matter. Ooh, three focus tokens. So I will spin my focus token, and I will turn all three of these dice to hits. So three damage coming at you. And I've got two defense. Yep, two defense. And no none shields. Nope. And what's the name of that thing? Precise Hunter. Can you pull up a Precise Hunter and tell us how much That is not that the thing? right thing for me to be flying, let me tell you. Um... Three health. Three health. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the top left number? No. no that's pilot skill. That's weird that it's not on there. Yeah, I don't know why. Okay, so I roll two defense dice. Mm -hmm. And I've got this thing. While you defend, you may spend one calculate token from a friendly a friendly ship at range zero to one to change one uh, eyeball to. The okay, so they can spend each other's calculate tokens. Yeah. So that's the benefit of calculate. Yeah. Yeah, so you have one evade and one focus, so you could spend a calculate token from either ship to change an extra one to an evade. Is this guy gonna get a shot at anything? You got a you got a eyeball there? Eyeball to He'll eyeball. Be able to shoot Obi. But they can both spend each other's tokens, right? Yeah, so it doesn't matter. It's all the pool, the shared pool. So we'll and is that while defending? Defending or attacking. Yeah, cool. That's really cool. I was wondering what the upside was. Yeah. Done. Okay, so you uh, still take one damage. So I take one damage. Yeah, and you have a damage deck there? Since you don't have any shields? Yep. One damage. Okay. Mine. Then Obi-Wan's going to go. Um, he's going to shoot the same ship, and there's going to be range two. So I'll only get two dice. And let me make sure there's nothing here. Okay, two dice. It's a focus fire technique here. Oh, hey, crit. There's a reason I was okay at this game. Okay, so you rolled one focus token. So you could use your Calculate to change it. And then take a crit. And then take a crit and hope it's not a double damage. All right, we'll do it. Yep. Yep. Keep shields on the board. All right, so a crit's going to come from the damage deck and it's face up. Weapons failure. After performing an attack, roll one fewer attack die. I can take an action to repair this card. There you go. Uh, those are my fives. So now we're going to move to your four, which I don't think can see. No, I still can't. And again, so your four won't shoot. All right, three. And then your threes. Uh, this guy has a weapons failure. Does that apply to my ion cannon? Yeah, when attacking. Okay. So I'm going to attack with my ion cannon here. Uh, here to here, I get plus one. Now, it used to be, I'm not sure if this is the case, but when you're using an ion cannon or a secondary weapon like that, that your opponent doesn't get range bonuses. And actually, range bonuses didn't apply either direction to ion Either cannons. direction? Is that true? So, like, shooting someone at... Uh, Range three with an ion cannon wouldn't give them a bonus die, but that's how it used to be. I have no idea. And ion means you have to go forward? I If you have a small ship with one ion token, it means their next maneuver has to be I'm going to try to get you to hit that asteroid, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, ion cannon. If this stack hits, spend 
a hit result to cause the defender to suffer one hit damage. Aren't crits canceled first? Nope, they are not, says Lance. Uh, range bonuses only matter when the symbol is the missile symbol. That makes sense. What's the missile symbol? What do you say? Range bonuses apparently only matter. Uh, if it has the arc symbol, ranges apply. It has the arc symbol right here, ion cannon. Okay, yeah, yeah. It says yeah. arc three. So when there's a missile symbol, so when you're firing a missile, that's what it was. You didn't it apply doesn't the range apply. Bonuses. So I get a plus one because I'm close. I remember I had some, like, the, what do you mean? There was a five attack missile that I used to run all the time, and you would fire it at range three. So your aces in the first pass, range three, I would just poke you with this big attack. Nice. And if I hit, all of my other ships that next turn would just swarm that one thing and try to... It's thematic. Eject it. Okay, so I get plus one, but minus one because of my weapons failure. Yeah. So here comes blank city. I'll roll just for fun. I just fun. feel like I'm rolling a lot of blanks here. Yeah. Well, I got I one. I don't know. What, what's the, is that, is that it, real or is that psychology? Strikes and can't, getters. can't quite tell. Okay. This guy is going to be, what, range three on yeah. this thing too, Plowy? Uh, can he hit Plow? I don't think he can hit this because his arc is like here. Oh, right. So he's got range three to Kenobi. Geometry. Precise Hunter. Two attack. Um, I'm going to try to eye on him, too. It's three dice. Why not? Eye on Cannon Ahoy. There he is. Two hits. Two hits. Come on, man. Rolling four evade. Come on. Ooh, ooh. Get ioned. All right, so I take a damage, so I lose a shield. Yeah, so everything gets canceled, you take a damage, and you get ioned. Yeah, and then we got a little orangey token. Boom. Is that what that is? I think so. It's a tractor beam. That's what I think of when I think of ions. It's actually going to be relevant, because I've got tractor beam stuff. Hmm. Well, okay, what about this? You want to? I, I have other tokens. Look at those little target locks we made. That's awesome. You can use that little lightning bolt token. Let's do this. I got this little blue token. Oh, I see it. Hold on, I see it in there. I saw it. I know force can be used to change your dice, but I thought it could only change focus tokens. Here it is. Yeah, I, I, I rolled all blanks other than that. I had a focus token to use, even. So it consider, it, consider it ions. I rolled blanks. Okay, uh, so now my three gets to shoot. You still have a shot left? Uh-huh. Wow, these ranges are long. I had no idea. All right, let's That's go range awesome. three on the, this thing. Sun Fac. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she's rolling two dice, and not my primary. Okay, here we go. Hit a crit. He just can't miss. I forgot to tell you my secret. What is so this? I, the dice what that I'm you, using. What are you doing? I took home. I put on a baking sheet. <laughs> I warm, warm the oven up about 450. <laughs> slide it in there. All right. When it's on the crit side, up, up of course. Slide it in there. You gotta be careful. These are promotional dice. You had to win at tournaments. Uh, very, very expensive. One evade. So I take uh, the crit. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? America no shields. I don't what think is so. This? Where is this thing? It's a droid. It doesn't have shields. It has efficiency. Does it have any d ability to do anything? Everything's got to be tractored. Okay. Going to be tractored. Hmm. I have a fuel leak, though. After I suffer a crit damage, I suffer a normal damage, and I repair this card. Okay. Otherwise, everything's fine, though. Everything's Definitely going great. Fine. All right. End of the round. All our tokens clear. All our like positive tokens. Um, then we calculate points. So I have one here. We both have one there, so no one gets a point there. Mm -hmm. You have one here. So you score one. I score one. What about this one? You score two, and then I score so two. So two, two all. Two to two. So the total is I'm four and you're five. Just got to keep that going. Yeah. Got to right. keep that going. Keep, keep that, that good keep energy. Going. Um, and then there was something I was going to look up. 
Ooh, I've lost a die. <laughs> These are the slipperiest di <laughs> dials I've ever seen. Those, I could those plastic ones, yeah. Send this one to. Okay. Are we ready to set dials? We I, we're ready to set dials, yeah. Okay, seven. Who's seven? You're seven. Wait, did this guy get to shoot? He didn't. No, he should have. Where is he? When, where's the. Is he in three? I'm going to take Plo Koon to town here. It looks like range two, range but there is an asteroid, so I will get the Okay, the range bonus. two. And he's number seven. Uh, and he did a barrel roll, right? So he's just got... He's got uh, an ion candy too. I'm going to try to eye on him. Tyler, this is the new rule set. Uh, not sure how we feel about it yet. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't been playing enough to really feel any certain kind of way about anything. Um, three dice on you with the ion. Steel slime. Uh, measure the distances because there are... Oh! Dude, get ioned. Roll four. <laughs> there are now objectives. Uh, these little tokens that are out here. Whoever has more ships at range one at the end of each round scores a point. First person to 20 points wins. Uh, one evade. So with an ion, it cancels all the damage, and I take one. Take one and take an ion. It's a right. You want to give me another one of those tokens? Oh, no. no, there's a rock in the way. <laughs> oh, no. The droid army is growling. I'm about to learn today. Is this gone? This is gone. Okay, now we set the dials. Now we set the dials. Uh, Chris, there, there, it is active. Yeah, there, there's more content being produced for this game, as far as I'm aware. Okay, number seven. What are you doing? What's that going to do? So he's going to move forward. And is it bad to be in your in your bullseye in Plocoon, particularly in general? Yeah. So when I attack, if you're in my bullseye, I get an extra attack die. Um, if there's an enemy in my front arc, I can gain a deplete token to recover a force. That doesn't really matter right now. When I perform fire attack, if you're in my bullseye, I add a focus result to my attack. Uh, yeah. They all like that. And if you want, it's... You could easily get obsessed with this He's got to go one forward, right? He does. Fine. You could get obsessed with this game. I know what that's like. Hmm. What's... What's... What's that? <laughs> um, so that's a two... I forget what that's called. But it, the way it works is like this. Is it the... Uh, so it's a two turn, right? But you flip. But instead of just doing this, you actually would turn like this, right? Oh, my. Okay, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a, it, a K turn, a red turn normally like that would turn you around. So it's the same idea in that you will turn, but then be facing the opposite way you're facing. Okay. Is the only thing that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, Steel Slime, yes. Objectives are new in 2.5. What am I going to do here? Um, and... Okay. This could be a disaster. We're back. <laughs> oh, he got ironed? He did. Both of them. Lame. Yeah, and like, I, need, I, I that, that means that I should have... Perfect have ...everything I want. Yeah. Don't fail. Uh, so, but now it's like insane. It's insane. Let me just... Now this is X-Wing. That made me go right in the asteroid. Well, you're uh, thinking this, and I think it would be enjoyable for everyone at home to hear whatever's going on in your brain. I'll be right back. I don't think that's something enjoyable. I wish like, we could cut to a scene where it's actually in his brain. It's like, uh... <laughs> I have no idea what to do. Um, big part of me wants to go get that big objective, but I have to start turning at the higher speeds. Oh. So, I don't want to like plot myself right in front of Zach's ships. Which this would do, 
Right. So so that's out. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. I think I'm gonna just get out of here. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be horrible. I hate that I hate that everybody has to see this. Okay, so the two thing I feel like is right and you and you turn? I think that's right. They're both gonna do it and we'll see where the chips fall. This could be beautiful. This could be beautiful. It could be beautiful. Yeah. Now, do my, my lower stuff moves first? Yeah. Okay, so then Sun, Sun's got a chance here to actually be a, a performer, a star. Yeah, yeah, these are, these are good. These are, this is great. Grievous is dead though. You know it, Bryce, I know it. Everybody knows it. This is, this is not where you wanna be. Ahsoka and Anakin versus Grievous out here in the middle of nowhere. This is not good. We don't like this at all. I think Zach may have told me wrong, given the symbols that I'm seeing. I don't know. Yeah, let's try it. Grievous, what are you doing? You are going to go this way and move. Yeah, okay, so that's a left move. Let's let's do you like that. Let's do you like that. Oh man, I feel like I'm about to get wrecked here. Let's go. Okay. Done. Now what you're about to see is classic great X-Wing. Um all the maneuvers gonna line up perfectly. Uh Zach, of course, is I over here, which means I have perfect knowledge to set the ideal maneuvers. Uh, to to win me the game here, which of course I will be doing. What's up, Steel Slime? I'm gonna read this. Um, Chris Gilbert here. Interesting. It is mainly is it mainly new miniatures? Can't imagine many variations that haven't been covered. I'm not a fan of Star Wars though, so maybe naive to the scope. Chris, what are you doing? Not a fan of Star Wars. I think this is one of the problems, says Steel Slime, with uh, games attached to licensed universes. You're limited by what uh, already exists in Lucasfilm canon. Yeah. Did they did did they get the expanded universe back together? I don't think so. I thought they were thinking about doing that. Maybe it was just a random comment. Yeah, your droids move first and will, uh, if you're taloning those droids. Oh, right. Oh, no. Thank you. Andrew, you just saved me. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That would have been an absolute disaster. <laughs> I feel very fortunate. <laughs> very fortunate. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. I can see what you've been saying on the screen. I don't have any good ideas. Uh, I, I almost did something very problematic. Forgot your droids are moving first? No. Who would do that? You know, you I don't need is one of the best things that happened because I don't have to think about it. I, I I have no I literally have nowhere to go. I don't understand. Oh. Well, you know I'm going forward, right? Yes. Well, that's the easiest part of this entire thing. So, like, hand me that one uh, template over there. I'd like to look at it for a this? second. The the movement. Um. Yeah. If this one moves one, and this one does a two turn, are they going to hit each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like. You can't pre measure. I know. I'm just showing you. 
Okay. Well, luckily, that means I know exactly what to do. Uh, I'll do this guy. It's going to be a three. Uh, or not. I mean, I won't tell you. And then... I can't do anything over here, so it doesn't matter what you do or I say. I just think you're... I think, I think you're going to still... All right. So, see where they lay. All right. Roll on attack. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this changes this plan. Hold on a second. Must have been love. It's over now. You know what's crazy about this? I even with you being ion, I can't get out of the way of, of the bad things that are coming. Okay. All right. Let's go here. <laughs> I can't do this. This is too much. It's too much. Let me get you a stress token. It's too much. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, let's try that. Put a lot of pressure on yourself. Uh, you ready to roll for initiative? Uh huh. Roll a red. If it's a hit or a crit, you have an issue. It's a hit. All right, your threes go first. If I hit during a barrel roll, do I stop the barrel roll? Or the... You can't barrel roll. What about the turny thing, the K turn? You don't K turn. You just bump. Okay, so we'll, we'll start there. We're not sure that this is going to work. I love this. Eight, <laughs> eight is. We can just remove those ions, do you? Yeah, they're both ioning. He has a one K turn? Yeah. Are you kidding? No. That's a ridiculous maneuver. I didn't even know that existed in the game. Yeah, me neither. Sick move, dude. Uh, he's stressed, though. He's, how does a droid get stressed? Well, it overheats. All right. Quick on my feet, you see. Uh, and so I don't get an action. OK, they seem like they need to be taking calculates, to be honest with you. Met, I mean, there's a cost. What is, what is Sun doing? Providing heat. Oh, no. <laughs> There's about 4% of our audience out there that laugh right now, and it was all the kind of people that are just like Bryce. This is the kind of thing that I do in X-Wing that makes me absolutely furious. Nightwatch saying, that I love the, this point in the game. The tension of the maneuver choices, that's the genius of X-Wing. What were you saying? You're taking a three turn. You didn't ask me if that would bump. Does it? Well, it doesn't bump. Can I move through my stuff? You can move through it. The question is... It's a genius maneuver. Look at it. Sit it right in there. You know what? Sink it in there. I'll just, I'll just allow it. Look at how great that is. What? That is X-Wing gold. That I'm, is Paul I'm, Heaver level stuff. That's what I'm talking about. I'm right going to give that one to you. Nailed it. Right on that satellite. Coordinate. Coordinate, excavate, whatever this thing's called. Chris was asking... Uh, how many Star Wars ships there could be, and then uh, someone was saying a lot, and then he said, "Okay, I looked at the Wikipedia page dedicated to Star Wars spacecraft. Guess I was totally wrong." Uh, Jim asking if we played Armada. If so, how do you compare it to? So I played Armada every week for on a, on Sunday afternoons. My friend Matt Garrett locally used to work the store on Sunday afternoons. Great time. Played Armada a lot. Uh, love that game. Uh, it's a great hangout in the afternoon on Sunday and drink a beer game. Totally different than X-Wing. It's way less stressful, honestly. Um, X-Wing is just faster paced, more zoomed in. Uh, Armada is more long-term strategic big picture, but Armada only goes, I think, six turns. So depends on your flavor. It's a slower, bigger game. Quinn, it has been a while since we last played. OK, done. OK, my three, uh, Ahsoka. Three bank to the right. To the right. And then she'll focus, of course. Uh, let's see. After you fully ask kid mover, you may choose a friendly ship at range zero to one. Uh, not any. Oh, yeah. Do I mean that stuff? Okay. Uh, that's my three. And then your four will move. General Grievous. Uh, Grievous is doing a K turn, I think. No, it's one of these three. saucy ones. Yeah, so it's this. Yeah. 
So it is a K turn. It's just a. Right? Yeah. And it does turn me, it turns me fully. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's right. So it's the, the turn thing that has the arrow pointing down is what you do a turn and you face back the direction you were coming. Okay. But that's stressful. Yeah. There it is. And then, uh, yeah. So my fives go next. One forward. Is that a speed three maneuver? It is, yeah. I can spin one to perform a phoenix looking, is that a boost? Yeah, that is a boost. So a boost would Even be, while stressed? A boost would be one forward or a one bank forward slash left right. What do you think I should do? Um, I mean, if you kind of look where it would make you end, odds are I'm going to do... You can see... Here's an example of my dial, which you would have open information and... to. But I'm stressed, so I'm probably taking one of these blue maneuvers, which is either a one bank left or right, a two bank left or right, a two forward or a three forward. So I'm probably going to end up in that vicinity. It sort of depends on... I'll just keep it there. Let's fire. Yeah, like if you want to attack or... Let's fire. Like in your health state, you may not want us to attack. Yeah, but in my brain state, I do. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, okay, then my fives have to go one forward. This is the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. Clicked it. Oh, God. <laughs> it's been a while. All right. So he went through the asteroid. Yeah. A few things happen, and the ion happens. So he's lost his shield, so he's going to take a damage. Straight up. And then I roll a die, and on a hit or a crit, I take the hit of the crit. Nothing. That's when you don't roll the hit. <clears throat> yep. And then uh, you can now take actions. This is new in 2.5, because I'm not on the asteroid. I've moved fully through it, barely. So he will take a... Actually... Hmm. He's going to take a... Can he see? Yes. Yeah, he definitely can. He's got focus. Uh, then we'll go General Kenobi. Also has to go one forward. Look at you. Look at you. I'm right there. All right, I can't barrel roll out of this one. Do I have boost? I do. I've got Kenobi in my sights. <laughs> it sounds like a dialogue from the movie, right? Yeah, it does. I've got General Kenobi in my sights. Execute laser maneuver. I hate saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have these fine-tuned controls. After I fully execute... Uh, it's not a maneuver, I don't think. The ion. No, you didn't maneuver. You floated through space. Well, maybe it is. We'll focus know. up. It is a maneuver, technically. Hold. I don't think it's actually, because you don't... You put get an action, you're just floating. How can you focus while you're just freaked out? Your well, systems when, are down. When you can't control your ship, the only thing you have left to do is sit there and meditate. <laughs> A true Jedi way. Ah, is that how it goes in traffic jams as well? Yeah. That's actually, uh, you probably haven't seen it in a long time. One of my favorite moments in The Phantom Menace, episode one, is there's a scene where Qui spoilers from 20... Two years ago, three years ago. Where Qui-Gon gets uh, stabbed by Maul and he's dying. Uh, or actually, it's bef right before he gets stabbed. So these, like, shields go up between Maul and Qui-Gon. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And then Qui-Gon just, like, gets on one knee and starts meditating. Because they can't, they're like, it's a pause and they're fighting. And then Maul's on the other side, like, pacing, like, angrily back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it's just a perfect depiction of the difference between, obviously, the light side and the dark side. Yeah. Although, Qui-Gon died. So. The meditator lost. Mm. So, be angsty. But he won in the long game. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's the moral of the story here. Anyways, uh, there's those three things. Now your six goes. I don't want to move my six. I, Can I pass? Where's your six? <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to reveal to the world what I chose. There was nowhere for this thing to go. That's now, in retrospect, there were actually a lot of good options. Mm-hmm. Knowing but that my two ships are going to be here and yours were definitely going to be there. All things that I knew. Yeah. So if I were uh, good at X-Wing, I would definitely have, have rocked this. But Ooh, Quinn's saying the one straight is a maneuver. Oh, that's the wrong direction. But when you ion, you can only focus. So it's the only action I can take. Two. I had it facing the wrong direction because I was backwards. Did you want to go the other way? No, I did not. I wanted to come towards the action. I thought I was going to hit this, though, so this might be perfect. 
Now we're x wing. I'm going to hit you, right? Yeah, you're definitely going to hit okay, me. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, but I can still attack you now. That's right. So we'll cover those new rules shortly. So you bump me. You don't get an action. And let's look at the... I find that in X-Wing, actions are overrated. Uh, you can still perform a stressful focus or calculate action. Doing it. Yeah. Can't perform additional actions, uh, and you don't, don't take any damage. Yeah. A stressful calculation. Autumn's Equinox making a good point. Uh, Qui-Gon was the first Jedi to become a Force Ghost. Meditating obviously worked. All right. Uh, then my six is going to take a two straight. And this, I did not... I did not fully perform a maneuver if I bumped. Is that the idea? That is correct. I didn't fully execute a maneuver. Right. Just a just a little execution. You're a little shy. This is gonna go well over there. I'm excited to see how that one mm -hmm. turns out. All right. <laughs> I thought Bryce was dying over there. Okay. What do we do now? Uh, well, I gotta take my action and stuff. Hold on. All right. I'm just gonna focus. Shocking, I know. No, DMJ says, I think no focus for the Jedi on the rock. He's not on the rock. He went through the rock. He went through the rock. Uh, this Kylo token is going to be a focus because I'm all out. All right. Mm. So, uh, your six shoots first. So let's look at sh shooting while we're base to base, which is new. That's base me. Okay. If the, def the defender is supposed to be tractored. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, attacks at range zero. You can attack with a primary weapon at range zero. Dice cannot be added. Dice can only be modified with a force token for their default effect. So you can't not you a can calculate. Attack. You can't calculate, but you could calculate on defense. And I could pass it off to another mm -hmm. homie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ergo. I have three attack dice, only in the front arc, but I'm obviously, as we've covered, very good at this game. So I achieved that. And then I don't get the bonus, the plus one bonus, for being close to you. I don't know. Surely not. Well, or maybe I get two extra dice, because I'm real close. I'm basically shooting lasers No bonus your... dice for okay. range zero attacks. Any other text that matters? No. Mm. Wow! Got the dad special. Hit, hit, crit. All right, platoon defending here. Going through this. He's only got two health left. Yes. So yes. we need some results here. Yes. Oogly boogly. Blank, blank, blank. Okay. Uh, two foca focus. So foci. I foci. I'll send a focus. Change these to evade. <laughs> and. <laughs> Take a crit? Yeah, that's exactly where I was going, by the way. I just didn't get it out. Uh, take a crit. So we're going to take a face-up damage crit? Yes. What is it? Direct hit. No, it's double damage. Ah, oh, yeah, dog. You go. So he goes boom. Sun fact flew right into your crew quarters. That is classic X-Wing if I've ever seen it. Ship just getting taken right off the board. <laughs> nice to know you. Mm -hmm. Let's this. Oh, look at me go. But the board got simpler, you know? <laughs> One ship at All a right. time. Uh, that was your six. You're perfect. This is perfect maneuvering, man. Uh, I think that's really what did it. Now my six gets to go. Anakin Skywalker. That's going to go well, I think. Uh, two sit dice standard, or at range one, so plus one. Uh, While well, I perform an attack, if the defender is in my bullseye, I add... Oh, no, that's what I'm supposed to not do. <laughs> focus result. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that thing. Mm. So I get a free focus added to this, and I'm rolling three dice. So let's uh, see what happens. I'm not supposed to be here. Agreed. Everything on my card tells me I'm supposed to be, like, not in your firing arc. Let alone my bullseye. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, hilarious. This isn't a die in the pool, right? It, it gets added because of my ability. Oh. Yeah, so if you're in my bullseye, he adds oh, a focus. Oh, wow. Awesome. Um, and you're at range one, so I got the bonus die. You're pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and spend this focus token. Can you tell me how many health Grievous has, Bryce? Asking for a friend. And where is your Grievous? Here. 
I, two shields and three hull. Shields are gone, so I've got three hull to get through. Yeah, and there's three hits and a crit here. Okay, and I've got two defense. Yeah, what could go wrong? And... Uh, Dysphoria, this is round three, and the score is currently Steven. Well, actually, hold on. I killed the ship. Plo Koon, so you get bonus five points. Steven's at ten. I'm currently at four. My, if the attacker is outside of my firing arc, it is not. <laughs> if the attacker... If you are not in the defender's firing arc, not true also. Okay. You've done it all. All things true. Is that cocked? Cock die. Reroll it. Two focus results. Staring down the sun. Uh, dead. All right, so you take three damage in the crit, which you will, like, deal off Cancel, of the damage deck. Three dead. Yeah. All oh, right. Just uh, for randomness sake, you do get those cards. Three. Yeah. And then a crit. Yep. Done. Yeah. Now, if you were pilot skill six, you would get to fire back at me, actually, just for... I'm not. Minutes, so you're not. So remove the ship. That's not how that's supposed to go. And for anybody evaluating <laughs> this list, that is not what you're supposed to and do. And how many points is he worth? It should be the top number in that box up there. Five, I think. Five. All right. So now I'm at nine. We did it. Okay. Well, Anakin had a success against Grievous. I mean, it's, you can't ride it better, it's, right? It's fair. Um, so then my fives get to go. Uh, so Obi-Wan Kenobi. It must have been Range one. Love. You could also hit this one. Hmm. Which one's the one that I damaged? Number nine. Can't shoot him. We'll shoot this guy. Currently you have soulless one. Yeah, but I wasn't outside the arc. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, when you defend if the attacker is outside your firing arc, which was not true. It was oh, well. but keep reading soulless. You may reroll one defense die while you defend if the attacker is outside your firing arc. Hmm. Someone's saying it adds a hole. Attacker was not outside of my firing arc. I don't have anything that says uh, add a hole. But maybe it does somewhere. Maybe there's a stat we just can't see on these cards. Adds two hull? It doesn't say that anywhere. Mm -mm. Solus one doesn't say that anywhere. It says tropical tree symbol while you defend if the attacker is outside. I wonder if it's to the far right. Oh, Dude, it's, it's right here. Two. Look at it. Yeah, plus two. You see that? That's where our hull is supposed to be. Because it's right here as well. You see a tiny bit of ink? It's oh, supposed to register. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, pull these up. Okay. Here's plus two hole. But I think I did enough damage to nuke you anyway. I right? take three, but then I, I spin one to cancel the crit. Mm. Courtesy of my ability. Uh, there is. Let me find it. So I have five hull total? Is there a. F yeah. it's, no. All right, so I take three impervium plating one. Cancel it. Yeah, look at that. We're back, baby. Oh, it is there. It's just yellow. Something like that. Wild. Was yeah. it like that, I think? Yeah, you or was like, I the you other? Were, you were just directly facing me with okay. stress. Right on. And what was your crit? You canceled the crit. I canceled it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you have one left. Okay. Um, and I have these pulled up just in case we need them. Okay, great. And it adds two hull totals. Do I have five total now? You do have five total. Okay. It's in it's in an impossible. It's in it's highlighter it's, yellow. Yeah, it's crazy. No, nothing can print that. I was wondering. I was like, where's that at? It's just not there. All right. Well, I've got two health left. I'm feeling fine. Three and two makes five, right? All right. So my five is going to shoot here at range one. Yeah. At range one for sure. <laughs> there you go. Try to get you with the maneuver template. Uh, dude, I don't think that's in range one, okay? Ooh. Two crits. I'm going to spend a force to turn this focus into a hit. Okay, son. And let me pull up him. I've got three defense dice. Uh, so he also has five total hull. And you're supposed to defend, or I'm supposed to tractor you. Okay, I need dads here. Oh, three evades? Zach, do you like losing an X-Wing? Ah! You know what we call that? Natties. <laughs> Alright, my five is gone. You're you're so you you your emotionless take on X-Wing is alarming. I you're should like be a the droid. serial killer when you play this game. I feel like I should be the droid. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, your four gets to go over here. All right, time for the rebound. Range in. Okay, none of the things that I'm doing matter. So it's just a natural attack. That's an enlightened take. <laughs> With, yeah, thank you. I'll be here all week. Three attack. And a bonus because I'm, I'm close to you. Grievous coming in hot, swinging his lightsabers oh. for two damage. That's also one of the funniest things in that whole movie is uh, Count, Count Dooku has trained me in the art of the Jedi or whatever, and then he just like gets out the sabers and goes, this yeah. <laughs> is this is robot stuff. <laughs> Dooku just working with what he's got, you know, yeah. rock like, right, Get the lightsabers out and swing them in circles really fast. <laughs> um, one evade. One of these. I'll spend one of my force. All right. A little force drain. Just take it to the shield, man. We'll evade and cancel those things. Okay. I do, have, I do have R2 for this very purpose. Uh, your threes go first. My threes go first. This guy can't see anyone. That's right. This guy can't see anyone. That's right. This guy is range one on Kenobi. That's right. And this guy is number nine. Numero nine. And he's got a weapons failure, which I guess I should have probably fixed. Uh, can you? Yeah, I'm gonna do. You let me do that. I forgot how that. Right, so you, yeah, you don't get, get a focus. focus every now. But then, what's it say? You spend an action to fix it. Yeah, I just spend yeah, an yeah, action yeah, instead. Okay. My plus one dice is better than a focus token. Permanently, yeah. Every time you attack from now on, yeah. It's called compounding value. Would concur. So precise hunter has two attack, plus one. While I perform an attack, if the defender is in my bullseye, I can reroll a blank. While I perform an attack, I can spend a calculate from a friendly ship at range 0 to 1, which is going to be this one. Mm -hmm. So I do have that calculate available. And then I can eye on you if I want, which would dance you right into the... Roid. Asteroid. Well, mm -hmm. I have to do that, right? Seems good. How much health you got on Obi? Uh, let me pull up my spreadsheet. He's got no shields. Obi-Wan couldn't have been. Obi-Wan has three health. Uh, no shields, two force, and a focus turn. I should ion here, right? Yeah. Okay. Ion away. I can reroll a blank, courtesy of pinpoint protocols. And I will spend robot. Look at him go. He's oh, X-Wing in now. I'm X-Wing. I'm X-Wing. I'm X-Wing. I'm X-Wing. Uh, blank, blank, focus. I, I'm not going to be able to stop it. So, so I would have just done two damage instead. I'll take a damage. One damage, okay, that's fine. And I get the uh, ionization. Okay. Done. My three gets to go. Oh, you got a three over there. Mm -hmm. uh oh. Number nine is the one that was hit. Yes, number nine. This guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oops. No, wait. Is this an eight or a nine? That's a nine. This is an eight. Okay, that's an eight. Okay, yeah. So this guy's the one that's hitting you. I can't see it. it. It's crazy. If you put, if you take half of a nine and you cover the other half, you don't know if it's a you nine or no eight. idea what it is. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, she's going to actually shoot at um, the damaged one. So she's rolling two dice. Range three, so you get a bonus defense die. Yeah. Uh, hit and a focus, so I'll spend a focus to turn it to a damage. So two coming at me. Mm -hmm. I don't have any focus tokens to defend. My grappling struts I have too much text. Here we go. Blank city. He gone. How many? How much health do I have on these guys? Uh, the definitely. Plus, <laughs> I've the got two on this guy already. So uh, precise hunters have. Three, but you actually have four, but that's enough to actually take you off the table. How many yeah. points are they worth? Looks like three points. You're worth three points. All right, so I go up to 12. But I did my job. He ironed on his way out. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, uh, then we'll go to the end phase. So you're actually racking up some points here. Three this is in range one, so one point. As if I we was tie here. doing it on accident. Two points. You get two, I get one. So I'm at 13. You were at 12. Wait, how'd you get to 13? Apparently, because I killed chips. Two of them? You only killed one. 
Uh, oh, Grievous I'm, didn't die yet. He, Grievous is not gone yet. So I'm, he's a, he was five, so I'm only eight points. Okay. Eight to 12? Mm-hmm. And I got to get to 20? Yeah. Hmm. Feeling pretty good. Hmm. Okay. Uh, back to Dials. He's Ion, so he won't get to do nothing. Um, okay. Let's think about this. Sun Fac in the NTX. It must have been love. Yep. He's going to do it. Wait, if I'm stressed, I can't take a stressful maneuver. That's right. Oh, and I'm just ready for that asteroid. If you're stressed and you take a stressful maneuver, I get to pick what maneuver you make. I remember that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like choosing a maneuver for your opponent. They love it. This will be painful for you. Now, I can't take a normal maneuver. I just don't clear the stress. Mm-hmm. We like that. Acceptable? OK, and then we've got this whole problem. Um, what are we going to do here? Game's good, man. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, the core of X-Wing is so strong, it's annoying. There's something special in the water. You are fine here, number seven. Number, you, you're stressed. I'm, I'm so sorry for stressing you guys out. But you're just droids after all. Okay, you here, Grievous. You're hopeless, dude. This is a hopeless Grievous. Uh huh. You are B twenty two, yeah. Okay, Grievous. Oof, you do not like being stressed, do you, buddy? No B. Doesn't matter. All right, let's go. We did it. All right, we want to roll an attack. If you hit, you have an issue. And the low ones go first. Let me make sure that I'm appreciating that. Three's up. Yeah. Hold on a second. That's that's a problem, though. <laughs> I don't like that part of this. And you're glad you didn't play that. Yeah, that's how that rolls. I don't like this at all. Eight. Right, hold on, let's make sure. Joe Solo finally playing X Wing on an X Wing play mat. It's a May the Fourth be with you miracle. That's right, Joe. We're here to deliver. If I take a non-stressful maneuver, but I don't do it well, and I hit something, I'm still stressed. Like a blue maneuver. If you take a blue, it clears the stress no matter what you do. No matter what I do. Yeah, I think so. That could be wrong in the new rules or whatnot. And you said align my corner to find out where my new position is? If you're doing a turn, yeah. it will literally line up with this line going this direction. How like, far will it go? So like this two going the backwards direction would put you, you know, like this. Yeah, so this is wrong. We, we don't like See this like maneuver lines at all. Up. We don't like this maneuver. How is it that I can maneuver well and then find myself in a position where now I can't maneuver uh, anywhere know. advantageous? That happens a lot in X-Wing. Because I'm not thinking ahead. Yeah. That's why. Uh, but it's We were talking about this this weekend. I forget what game. But like you were operating a deck. Starvo deck. Yeah, you were operating a deck, deck you're just yeah. trying to do what you're doing. So like figuring out the best this turn is step one. And then figuring out what your opponent is probably going to do on this turn is the next step. And then the layer past that is figuring out what you and your opponent are going to do on the turn after that. It's like chess. Yeah. OK, done. Ready. Uh, maneuvers. Uh, roll an attack back first. Right. If it's a hit, you have initiative. You have initiative. So your threes move first. Can't stop, won't stop. Um, let's go with number eight first, see where this goes. We're going to clear the stretch with a two turn. Which direction? That way. Let me uh, do you a favor. Hold on. I put that everywhere. Can't. 
Now Everything's but. fine. Now but. Okay. So I'm going to the template. Number eight is available for uh, calculation. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do that. I'll calculate. That seems like I should just kind of always do that. Target locks is where people are good at the game mm -hmm. live, I feel like. Uh, three here. Who needs an asteroid? When you have these weird things that I'm going to try to use. Let me make sure I can actually do it. If you overlap an asteroid and there are one or fewer other friendly ships at range zero. That's right. That's correct. You may flip this card. Do not suffer the effects of overlapping the asteroid or debris cloud. Nice. I just wanted to see what that was like. That's cool. That's a cool ability. And then because I'm now open, I ignore obstacles at range zero. I can't perform barrel rolls. And after I reveal my dial, if it's a two forward, uh, you can flip it back. Skip your execute maneuver step and remove one stress token. So I can just sit there, skip your execution step. They grapple onto the asteroid. And remove one stress token. And what a beautiful place for him to be. Because like you'll get cover from the asteroid when I'm trying to shoot him. Right? If you revealed a right or left maneuver, rotate your ship 90 degrees in that direction. After you execute a maneuver, flip this card. So I can stay there for one turn, I guess. That's awesome. Okay. It's a lot of text, but that's really cool. That is super cool, yeah. I do like that. So you can just stop and then not be and then take off? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he like attaches to the rock, right? Mm -hmm. And he can reveal the two forward to do nothing. Uh, that's cool. And then flip the card. That's really cool. Yeah. But then if now rotating will be really important because if you rotate right now, if you just took a maneuver off that rock, you would hit the rock. Because you're like on it. Yeah. But like if, if next turn you actually two forward to rotate this direction, then your maneuver would be from here, which won't hit the rock. Oh, and it doesn't hit it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Ahsoka. Isn't that something? Is doing a two forward. So that's just going to be a bump. This is the perfect example of the new rule, honestly. Only a two forward will pull you off the asteroid, says chat. Only a two forward. Otherwise, any of the uh, turnies just rotate. You just keep going in circles? Yeah, yeah, so you have to execute the maneuver Yeah. for it to happen. Huh. OK. Um, so this is a perfect example. I went two forward and bumped. Yeah. But the, and I will take a stressful uh, focus token. Um, we're both at three, so I didn't know if I was going first or second. Mm -hmm. And so now I get to shoot you. First. Well, we both get to shoot. It's simultaneous. But the okay. main thing is, I couldn't pick my maneuver knowing I was going first or second. Yeah. If I was going second, that's not the move I do. Was that better though? It wasn't. It made my decision less stressful because you can't actually make the prediction either direction. Okay. Uh, my five goes. We're going one forward, baby. I need my dice to be kind to me here. This is pretty cool. These little droids like hanging out on the asteroids here. And on the rock, I take a damage. <laughs> Dude. And I roll. Obi-Wan's having a non-heroic day today. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he got ironed off the rocks. Yes. And that's worth a lot of points. I'm coming for you, Five world more. championship. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm at back, a, baby. I'm at a scary level of points. <laughs> We need to get the work done here. All right. I've been rocked off the table. <laughs> uh, OK. Then your six moves. You remember that story, uh, that movie where X-Wing just hit an asteroid twice and died? <laughs> it just happened. Obi-Wan, that's the finale of the new I mean, upcoming series. You eye on me right into him, right? That's, that's right. really yeah. good. Yeah, classic. I mean, it definitely knew what I was doing there. So, wait, what about Grievous? He's a four, right? Oh, yeah, he, he, goes, gonna... he goes first. Yeah, sorry. Uh, he has a three forward. Can you Alex do that? Becker. Can well, you do that for me? Is it a green maneuver or a blue maneuver? Alex, you can't be... It's blue. You can't be watching this while you're driving that mail truck. All right. Clears your stress. Any actions? Yes. I would like to take a focus action. I got you. Okay. Uh, now you're six. Yes. This sun sun pack. <coughs> Pack sun. Oh wait, that's a that's a gravity card. Uh, three to the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I did. 
It's not much to do about it. But I'll just get a point is my idea here. So you take a damage from hitting the rock. And then I might take another one? Yeah. Oh, man, I could bamboozle myself, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, these asteroids aren't messing around they, anymore. The, the asteroids got rough. How many health do I have? Five. Oh, okay. You're doing, you're doing fine. Totally fine. You take it in. Let's take another one. Yeah, now down to two. Okay. Uh, then my six goes. And Anakin took a two left turn. Mm-hmm. Look at me. And then which one's the one that is damaged? Uh, none of these precise hunters are damaged. Sunfack and Grievous are both damaged. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Anakin will just uh, focus and recover a force. So then we go to the fighting stage. Sunfat can't shoot anything. Uh, Anakin can. I don't need to rub it in. That's fine. Anakin. Oh, Alex is home now. Great. Uh, range two of the rock. Or range three. We'll shoot this guy at range three. Okay. Um, so I have... Two dice on defense, plus one for... That's wrong. <laughs> two blanks. Nothing. Uh, then your four, nothing. Your threes get to attack. Your choice, which one goes first. Okay. So let's start here mm -hmm. on this guy. Yeah. Is it considered it's shooting through an obstacle? It still, is. Still, I reckon. Range two. I've got two dice. Um, if the defender is in my bullseye, it looks like you are. I can reroll a blank. Uh, defender perform an attack. I can spend a calculate from a friendly, of course. And I can choose to ion if I want for three dice. Let's do that one. He likes the ion. Three dice. Reroll blank. Don't need it. All right, roll a four. Uh, one, I'm going to take a damage and an ion. Boop. Mm. Mm hmm. One of these things. Okay. And then this three? three, yeah. I think I gotta take a shot at Ahsoka here, yeah. Yeah. Is bumping bumping is not a bonus dice though. Mm -mm. What kind of damage does she have here? She has uh, three health and one shield. Do we know what this is? It was your stress from this guy. He's gone. It, wait. Yeah. Yeah. He, it's coming with him. He's still Saves. stressed. Yeah. Um. I'm going to eye on you. Here. Real blank. It's been a focus. Mm. Wait, you're still gonna, you still gonna attack me? Yeah. I'm gonna hold that focus. Uh, two. Oh, dang it. So then nothing. Okay. Miss him. Then she's gonna attack you back? Yeah. Actually, she's gonna attack Sun Fack at range three. Oh, come on, man. Wait, all the way out there? Yeah. I've been detractoring and all. I don't even know what a tractor beam does, honestly. I, I make you barrel roll, I think. Is that right? Uh, What's up, know. Edward Sylvester? What is this, five, seven years ago? That's right. Uh, a blank and a hit. So she will use the focus to turn it to one damage. Oh, great. Yeah, great uh, piece here. Andrew, uh, Johnny saying, droids with struts ignore obstacles, so no extra dice. Uh, which didn't matter. Yeah. And you're going to see the eye uh, still hit. And then apparently my ability is... Uh, well, I don't know what, what we're talking about with my ability. Uh, George ability doesn't work at range zero either. I don't see anything about that. Don't know. Anyway. Uh, taking one damage, is that what you're saying right now? Andrew says, yep, it's 2015. I need to go tell myself to buy some Bitcoin. Uh -huh. Precise Hunter... One of eight. Oh. All right, end of the round. You score, looks like one. One here. Two, one there. three. Three. Six to 19. 19, so I just need to sit on an objective and, and not die. And I score one. Now we're close. <laughs> Look, you're destroying me. Ah, uh, yes. I'm an objective <laughs> player. Seems like I like X-Wing all of a sudden. Hey, you want to start cover next wing again? <laughs> Uh, and Zion, so that doesn't matter. Zion's really annoying. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta scoot though. Okay, we'll start with the easy moves. I just have dials everywhere. General Grievous, you're gonna take the no-brainer. 
Set yourself up for. So I'm gonna score one. Dial. What's your score? Nine. Mm hmm. I'm just trying to see if I have a chance at winning. Six. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I can. I can do it. This I'll has give to you, go. Give you a shot. Exceptionally well, though. And then I do. If you reveal the right or left mirror, rotate 90. After you execute a maneuver, flip this card. Okay, so I'll just sit there. I like that. We like that. Um, precise Hunter, you just need a boogie. You need to get out of here. So we're going to put you here. And then... Sun fact, it feels like you're trying to murder me as a big part of your win condition. As such, I will first locate my dial. There's a one right decision here. I'm no, running. No pressure. I'm definitely running. I don't know why you would think you'd want to do that. <laughs> Can I win if you run? No. Well, I am. So we haven't solved the problem and people are just running away at the end. Well, if I played better, I would have solved the problem. <laughs> Alright. Uh, roll a die. If it hits, you have initiative. Don't. I have initiative. Well, so, the now. second moves first. Uh, two right bank. Going to clear the stress. I'm just going to approximate. And then she will focus. And then your threes move. My threes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what are my threes? These are my threes. So let's start here with a five forward. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. This guy? Yeah. Perfect. Nailed it. Activate stress. Okay. Or focus. Uh, this guy. Give you a shot here. How does that work? Uh, I just turn him 90 degrees. Okay. So. Technically, we can just do this thing. Yeah, that's why you have him, I guess. But 90 degree angle, then you can you know, do your thing. Nice. And then I, uh, I'm, I'm good. Okay. And then mm. your four. General Grievous. Grievous is just going to try to fly in here and get that satellite. Yeah, smart. Very smart. Land on it. <laughs> That's right. Refueling. Uh, then my six has to go one forward. Mm-hmm. She did. Uh, after I activate, I'm going to spend an energy from R2 to repair a shield. On Anakin. These are so easy to turn. This is like right in the middle. It's so easy to turn. And then stand. I will focus. It's so easy. Yeah. Like if I was like right here and I was just like flip it up and I could turn it oh, like yeah. that. Like right as I'm going. Yeah. Anyway, it was this. It was the three bank. I was trying to get get out of here. Wouldn't it be funny if you flew off the board? <laughs> I just like somehow miscalculated and yeah. just roll right up. All right. Uh, focus up. All right. So my six shoots first. Anakin can see no one. <laughs> He's blinded by his hatred. Uh, your six can't see anyone. Your four can't see anyone. I can see the uh, finish yeah. line out yeah, there. That's right. <laughs> Ahsoka is going to shoot a range three shot. For all the tuna? Rebellions are built on hope. <laughs> Two hits. One step this time. Let's go. No! Focus. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that scene? Oh yes. man, the oh, that's so... how, how did they how did they not end it at the mask being put on at the very end? <laughs> that was the end. That was the end of the film. How did they not do that? I, I actually loved the uh, cuts between the Vader mask and the Padme funeral. 
Mm-hmm. And then, like, the mask coming down, it goes on. It's, like, really terrifying. End it. And then, like, even the, like, Rise Lord Vader. And it's, yeah. like, got the smoke and he's, like, you hear him breathing and he's come, yeah. standing up. But then, like, got to. cuts to black and you hear the breathing. Yeah. There's a million ways you could yeah. fix that. Phone. Instead, no. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I missed. Wrong. You're three. Um, Can't see anyone. Shoot. Okay, yeah. I'll shoot Ahsoka. Let's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, so just see if you can kill one more shit. Sure. Uh, I got two dice. Just a straight up shot there. One at you. From the asteroid. Evaded. Okay. All right. End of round. No one scores here. Uh, you score a point there. You score a point there. Going to 22 or 21. I'm at a measly nine. End of game. Steven wins the game of X-Wing. Just like it always was. Yeah, exactly. I, have you ever beaten me in X-Wing? Not once. Not really. <laughs> uh, here's what's amazing. Let's go top. Let's, let's, let's get the top view for a minute. So this, this actually does a really wow, good job. I look like I, I just got out of like a three-day bender. <laughs> We're stressed. Uh, this is an excellent. This is actually a really good show. G forces. What the new system does, uh, love it or hate it, right? And if you don't like it, I get it's different than the old game. But in this exact scenario, I have two ships that are going to be relatively hard for you to kill without focus fire, and I have your two biggest ships down to Injured. very low health. So in like a standard game of X-Wing, the next 30 minutes in like a tournament would be me trying to kill these ships. Yeah. Which I think I eventually would. You would do that, yes. And then once I kill them, your little ships cannot kill these ships. Yeah. Like it just wouldn't happen. And once we enter that state, it's just me running and not dying. Mm-hmm. But instead, I have this pressure point of, even though I have two ships that are going to be harder to kill, I'm dealing with these objectives that I have to try to navigate. Yeah. And you actually had a way to end the game before me doing damage to these ships actually did anything. So, yeah. like, hypothetically, um, I the damage I did to them has done... I get half points for getting past half your oh, uh, amounts. Oh, didn't know that. Cool, yeah. So, like, it's probably what? Uh, Grievous. Six, six points. It's probably at two and a half. Yeah, plus the three. And then, then three. So, yeah. three and a so half. So, I would have some of those points, but, like, because of, like, the score, the way it worked out, all that damage is essentially a waste. Mm-hmm. Like, it would have been way better if I'd spent my time just maneuvering, not dying, and getting the points. Yeah. And that's the tension point that is created by objectives. And like in a tournament, apparently, there's like four or five objectives. Round one is random of those four. Round two is random of what's left. Round three is random of what's left. It makes sense. You got to play all five. Yeah. And, and all, then if you run out can. of scenarios, it re- repeats. Like yeah. Now you put them all back in the pool. And each of the scenarios kind of rewards different things. Mm-hmm. So when you're actually list building, it's you need to know how your list is going to navigate all of the various win conditions. And deal with the fact that your opponent might just try to blow you up. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. It actually is pretty cool. And I got to tell you, the ships still look phenomenal. The maneuvering and stuff is unchanged, really. So, like, it still feels great, even as stressful as it is. And the the breaks that you gave me on these asteroids. Um and, you know, once you once you put a list together and you're the generator of it, you know what it's trying to do and you know the abilities. You don't have to keep <laughs> referencing the the card over and over again. Yeah. So that's just a, the fact that we're brand new to, to this rule set yeah. and kind of familiarizing ourselves. But otherwise, it's cool. I mean, you know, these little grappler things are pretty cool. Um, the idea of objectives as a whole, I think, is not wrong. I mean... Objectives in miniatures game has always saved you from degeneracy. Yeah, because without objectives, literally it's just which ships are the best at dying, like killing stuff or not dying. It's it's just math. Period. There's really nothing else. But now, like your little one K turn and the guy that can plan on an asteroid. Yeah, that's a really relevant ability in scenarios where you need to stay in the same spot. Like where I put the asteroids perfectly right next to the satellite. Yeah, it's just great. Um, but it just gives you more levers, right, to do interesting things. And I think. This is how X-Wing has always been, which is when you first start playing, you play a bunch of ships without that many upgrades, and you're kind of basic and doing your thing. And then as you're building, like, a lot of my units had the same abilities, and I just wasn't really leveraging or acknowledging them that much. And that's just what happens. But if you don't have this much depth when you play a lot, it gets it's boring. Yeah. Because at, at some point, you just have the same, like, similar ships with similar maneuvers flying around mm-hmm. and not unique in that kind of way. Um, so, I mean, I, I do get that it is a very different experience than it previously was, but not that the, different. For the most part, it feels similar. It's just better in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's not that different. 
Um, one thing that is notable, uh, worth mentioning at least, um, uh, Donald Kelly, is there something of more casual options, less bonus abilities, text boxes, etc.? A piece of this that, that is worth mentioning is, I guess, because the number of upgrade slots you have is factored into the cost of that ship, like, could we say, let's play a 10-point game, no upgrades? And are the 10-point lists always going to be close enough? Or is there, like, some ships that cost five because they have 20 upgrades, but they're not that great of a ship? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Like, maybe the Falcon is like that, right? Yeah, I assume I assume the point cost factors in the up Because the point cost changes by pilot for each type of ship. So, like, Obi-Wan in the same ship as Plo Koon is a different point cost. It's yeah. like each one of those is that, and then you pick your pilot. Yeah. And part of that is also the kind of upgrades they can even have access to. So, so you are incentivized to text them up. Yeah. But you could always come to an agreement as to, like, yeah. how that works. But there are, I think, more basic versions of the ships that don't have a lot of upgrade options. Cool. They just cost two points, right? Cool. Or they cost whatever. Okay. Um, because used to, the pilots and the upgrades cost points. Now it's just the pilot. So if you have a pilot that can't really upgrade much, they might cost less. And yeah. you're also penalized for not filling out your list. So you want to spend 20 points? Because if you started with 18, I just get two bonus points at the start of the game. Yeah. So you end up probably in a scenario where you have 17 that you want to play, and then you have to put a basic three-pointer in. Sure. Because that's all that fits or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, like the ships look great. The game's still fun. I think uh, objectives and scenarios, almost all, just strictly a positive for me. I think so. It, it's a little more complex, mm -hmm. as they always are with minis games. But I even think about when we were doing Infinity... And it was just kill each other versus like defend this objective or something. Mm -hmm. And the game opens up entirely because like that's that's what reality is. Is like you're not just like out there just like ah let let's yeah, there's murder. Like a, there's an objective outside of yeah. just murdering people. Yeah, and that drives a lot of the action and it, and yeah. it prevents things like castling and that kind of stuff that people do. That's too and generous. I think the bumping changes and the asteroids being more penal penalized. A lot of those things are just strictly positive. Yeah. Just like, don't hit the rocks. And the the initiative thing is interesting to me. Like, I'm undecided on whether I like that. If I had only ever known that, I don't think I'd have an issue with it, though. Yeah. So, yeah. like, mechanically, it's not a problem. It's just a matter of it's so in... I feel like there's so much... There is going to be skill in not knowing if you're moving first or second. I just feel like it makes you take the conservative path. Mm -hmm. The best moments in X-Wing are when you know your opponent could do A or B, ultimately, the two best moves, and you have to decide which one they're going to pick. And if you decide right and you move a ship in the way, it's, like, game-changing. Yeah, so it's an extra random element that you have to consider. Yeah, uh, and the randomness is their choice. But now it's like, well, if I move first, this is the best move. If I move second, this is going to be horrible. Yeah. And that's just a die roll. Yeah. That's not like they chose something and I chose something. Those are the decisions that create the drama between the, the player that's really cool. Um... So that's the only thing that I'm not sold on. But in again, if this is how I was presented the game originally, mechanically I don't have a problem with yeah. it. Uh, so a question from Nightwatch Games. Uh, is this enough of a change to rejuvenate a Star Wars X-Wing scene? Well, let me tell you this. Yeah, I've got some thoughts on this, yeah. I think that the way a game plays and the rules only contribute after a certain point in a game's lifespan. Five... To 15% of what is needed for a game to be rejuvenated. I think there's a lot of stuff going on with this one. Um, one, what's the state and health of Star Wars excitement in general? <laughs> so that's that's the thing that's going to attract new players yeah. in general. It has uh, been higher. Yeah, uh, and I, I think it has been higher. Now, the Obi-Wan show's coming out. I think this is the celebration this, this month where they're probably going to be announcing new movies, new TV shows. We're about to hit a lot of really cool stuff. But... I don't think it, like, going back to 2015, 2015 was, like, peak Star Wars hype. Mm -hmm. All the possibilities. Everyone really excited about Disney and new Star Wars movies. And, like, there was no... It was all bliss, right? At that very moment. <laughs> what a foreshadow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also think that any game as it ages... This is a 10-year-old game. It's gone through different editions, but there's a lot of products out there. So the second step for me, beyond excitement, which gets people interested in the IP... What, how challenging is it for new players to get involved? And I think with the breadth of the product catalog, I don't even know if there's like a convenient, this is the box you buy to start this faction or whatever. But uh, 
on top of all the cards and all the rules, you also have players that are exceptionally good at this. And if you don't, oh, yeah, the classic. Yeah. If you don't have a casual scene slash format that is welcoming to new players and teaches them, um, not a lot of people can just play a game for six months never winning and stick around. Uh, Josh Forbes, if you're out there, good as to you for making it in Thrones. But that's another reality. So, like, what what would healthy look like? And and I think it's a lot. There's a lot of cylinders that have to be run on the publisher end, from product releases and general excitement management and organized play. And even just stuff to get people to the table playing it at the kitchen table all the way to the tournaments. So it's it's just such a complex equation, and it's so tough for games to have second or third lives. Um, I've so rarely seen that actually be achieved when someone was, like, really focused on it. But at the end of the day, Star Wars pre-painted, pre-assembled ships. And still a, a pretty big audience, from what I understand. Yeah. I mean, still plenty, plenty of folks playing it. So it's not like it's a let's bring back Netrunner as Android Netrunner or something. Yeah. It's like ah, oh, yeah, you probably lost some people from first to second. You're gonna, that's going to happen if you don't do any changes. You're just always going to attrition yeah. players and just time. And yeah, time is a, a big factor there. But uh, notably, I think on this experience that we just had, at least it. The game has gotten to a point where um, you have to. You've added so many mechanics. You've added tractor beams. You've added the sloops. You've added the force. Yeah. You've added the little the lightning symbols. The charges. Uh, yeah, the charges. Uh, you've added a number of maneuvers, grappling to rocks, uh, droids having a different token than focus, but kind of the same. On and on down the road you go. You've added linked maneuvers, like all of this. So I felt like. The very first moment X-Wing hit the scene, it was appealing to an audience that was mm-hmm. way bigger than your standard chunky miniatures game audience. Yeah. Um, and so you would have people come in to play X-Wing. There's a lot of people that came to our store that had never played a, a, an expandable game before. And it was pretty easy to be like, okay, the ships are here, they move, we have a few basic actions, and we roll the dice. Yeah, everyone can kind of get that. So if you step into this kind of environment now, it feels more intimidating like a standard miniatures game environment where there's a lot of abilities yeah. happening, there's a lot of rules, a lot of text, which is almost unavoidable because you you have to keep the players that get in interested, but now it just gets progressively game. harder for new players to join and not be overwhelmed. Yeah. So it's about the rules complexity and the number of co- the amount of content that's out there. Yeah. Because at first mm-hmm. it was like, I have TIE Fighters or X-Wings, you have TIE Fighters or X-Wings. Yeah. That's what we're playing. Yeah. And that's hugely appealing for a large amount of people that don't have any idea what a tabletop game is. Yeah. Uh, but the moment that it's like, and here's all of this complexity, it's great if you're like deep into it and you want something to dig your your teeth into. It's not as great if you're a random person who's a Star Wars fan saying like, I'll give this a shot and then be like, uh, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, so it has just gotten more complex. And I don't think that's a knock on 2.5 or 2.0 or anything like that. I think that's just the reality of how a game that's this old is ultimately going to go. So that would be the major challenge for a publisher or for a store if they're talking about revitalizing X-Wing to some kind of a, a degree. I think you have to figure out how to cut through that with different formats, simpler formats, um, commoner, and TCGs do this a lot. Just some way to play X-Wing in an actual way that doesn't feel like you're just playing the new version, yeah. but like a well-supported, minimal uh, yeah. style of X-Wing, and it's which a, they may have, to be fair. I don't know that. If yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just such an inc- incredible challenge, honestly, uh, because it, the thing you were describing is so true for any game, which is... All that nuance that you add is what makes people that have been playing it all for the whole time or for years uh, ha- continue to have things to engage with. And I'm sure players that play a lot would play what we just played, and it's not complex at all. When I got there in X-Wing. Yeah. You have a full list. It's like not complicated at all. I know what all the cards do. I don't have to read any, almost any of your cards. I, I look at your ship, and I know what it's capable of doing, and you have all these things. and it's like, But it's enough stuff going on that I'm engaged the whole time with it. Uh, but... Every one of those steps that you add makes it more challenging for new blood to get into the game. Yeah, and I think a lot of games that you know, you look at old standbys like Magic, achieve it with you can always do draft and seal. Yeah, and like no matter how crazy constructed gets, <laughs> open these packs and put a pile of cards together and shuffle up and play. Yeah, and that game also has a resource curve where you start with nothing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't okay. start out like with all the information on the table. That is the miniatures game thing that is very overwhelming. Is like you have to know it all at the very beginning. It doesn't yeah. scale up. Which I do like. They in the at least the two point course that they have that escalation mm-hmm. format, which is like you start with one ship out. And then if it blows up, you get the next ship or like at certain intervals, new ships keep hitting yeah, the board. Yeah. Um, so there's ways to do it. But a lot of times the people that are really ingrained don't, it, those formats are not super engaging for them. So they don't want to play it. New player shows up. And if you're a new player and you're all about it and you're diving in, this much content is really incredible. Yeah. Like, and the existing player base loves that. The, the mm-hmm. People will just like, if somebody comes in and is like really into it, it's like, yeah, let's get you set up yeah. and like community is always super welcoming for that but i think what you're saying is it's n- nobody is extremely excited about playing like like escalation small time yeah. format for over and over again uh which it might be the best format for uh for onboarding so yeah. i don't know it's kind of a give and take and I, I think one example i wanted to point out to you before we get out of here is the as much as i like it actually um the a classic example of this is adding the rule that is when I bump your ship versus when I bump mine, something different happens. Yeah. Um, so that's a streamline that made Expoing 1.0 actually simpler because when I explain to a new player, here's how bumping works, I don't have to say, when you bump your ship, yeah. A, when you bump mine, B, when you run over this kind of asteroid, if you land on it, A, if mm-hmm. you go all the way through it, B, all those little things, as a deep into it player, those will be great. but. There was a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in 2.5. It's not just 2.5. It's from 2.0 and also from the end of 1.0. That block that I think makes it change. Coming back in with totally fresh eyes, I haven't done that for X-Wing since we left it. It was like, whoa. There's yeah. a lot happening here. Even yeah. if you're going to remove the point cost from the upgrades, it's kind of interesting to me because like, I do get the customization element, but like, 98% of the time when you play Anakin Skywalker, I would put money that he's built just like this. Mm, hmm So, like, instead of having a three base stat health and you have the upgrade that gives you plus one health and you have this extra ability, it's like, can you just make that how Anakin works? No, like, that's just the Anakin ship like or something. Anakin like it has R2 on him. Yeah. Straight up. And, like, integrate. Not, and you, I think you, if it were me, personally, I would love a streamlined stat card that not just has all the information, but has less. Yeah, sure. It's like, pick and choose a little more. I, I would be okay, person right now where I'm at, with less granularity, but I'm a player who plays it once every three years. Mm-hmm. You play it every week, it's different. different. Right. Yeah, you want yeah. a little, I want to be able to not run Brilliant Evasion and run something else. Um, so, anyways, uh, I think the game's still really great. I think if you're uh, looking for a really fun, it's the rule set is actually really simple on the top level. Set dials. Start with the lowest, go to the highest. Start with the highest, go to the lowest when you're attacking. Repeat. Beautiful system. Beautiful system. Just a stellar system. Uh, so if you like Star Wars, I can't recommend this game enough. Buy a core set, check it out. And that's also the way most people start, right? You buy a core set. Yeah. You play with two or three ships. And it's, maybe that's it. So it's yeah. on your shelf and that's a or, fine way to play it. you know, maybe you really like the Razor Crest and mm-hmm. you buy that ship. Or maybe you really like the Jedi Starfighter. So you buy a couple of those ships and like, that's how it starts, right? That's yeah. actually what happens. Yeah. The tough part is that a lot of times a new player is getting in and there's no one else in the area in that same state. Yeah. If there were always three to six people in that state in every community, it would be very easy to onboard. Mm-hmm. That's a world over. Yeah. True true for most everything. Um, quick decar here. Uh, or, uh, don't you feel the new squad point and loadout system is too complicated for new players? Tons of upgrades. Yeah, we kind of covered that a little it bit. It is very complicated. And then uh, Ryan Ganey going to restart OKC Games pretty soon. COVID killed us. Congratulations, Ryan. I hope that uh, goes well for you. And then Aaron Clark, any chance you guys do board game day? I remember Zach saying he got Namiji. Namiji. Could also bring your mom back on for Wingspan. We are actually going to be doing that, yes. So stay tuned. Plenty more to come there. Hey, Take care, everybody. Hey, thanks so much for being here, and thanks to all the X-Wing uh, players, Seriously. past and future. It, it is just awesome to be uh, involved in the game and to have, honestly, some of the, if not the best videos on our channel still to this day are for X-Wing uh, 1.0. So... Can't, can't thank you enough for, for being around. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.